there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Imagine if you were more than 100 kilos overweight and literally lived to eat and eat and eat. But what if you were faced with the choice of losing your weight or losing your life? Would you do something about it? Well, now we're going to. This is going to be life-saving. That's something everyone said, not feeling good, get it out. When it comes to the super obese, I feel like I'm really sick. these people are too big, even for the biggest loser. Now, how do you feel about yourself? I have had, you know, that occasional thought of that it's too hard, it's all too hard. And you just want to give up. The really depressing part about my body is just that uh, I've let myself and my stomach just get so big. I was sitting at home, bored out of my brain, and I was just eating, 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 eating. From what the doctors have sort of said, like, if you keep going in it, I was going to kill myself. I wasn't sort of going to make it to 40. I want to have babies and get married. I know that in the position I'm in, that wouldn't happen. I feel tired. It takes a lot to drag this around every day. People don't want to be seen with a fat person. Tonight, we meet Mick. One place that I find hard to fit through is the shower door. He's that once fat kid who became a super obese man. The average 30-year-old man eats about 3,000 calories a day. Brown dumpling? Yes, please. Mick eats up to double that. Yeah. Which is why he puts on more. Yeah, pop, pop and more and more weight. Pop because there's this much food going in at every meal. Pop Yum cha I absolutely love. I could uh, eat it three, three to seven times a week, not a problem. But Mick is paying more than a heavy price for his food addiction. Every day, easy things to do in life that I want to do, I can't do, because I'm trapped in this body that just hasn't got the energy to do anything. Being such a big bloke, the flexibility is a lot harder to actually get down to your feet and actually put socks on. Mick can't get a job. He can no longer even get an erection. Things couldn't get much worse, right? No, that's right. So the only way is up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but behind the laughter of this jolly fat man is an almost unbearable pain. Well, Paul was my eldest brother. He got up to go to work one morning, jumped in the shower, and his aorta valve near his heart it just exploded and gave him a massive heart attack, and that was it. Now Mick's weight is threatening to cut short his life too. I don't know how I let it happen. But this man's life is about to change forever. In the next hour, Keep going. we'll put him through 300 days of incredible physical and mental pain. What are you doing this for? Why? This is the true story of a food addict eating himself to death. A man who was simply too big. Any mushroom gravy? Why? Since the sudden death of his brother, 33-year-old Mick Spaulding has lived at home with his mum and his diabetic father. They're a family obsessed with eating. You do the right thing and eat the tomato. I'll have this. <laughs> Is your mum killing you with love? <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. Mum's, mum's always cooks a bit too much. Where well, I should just stick to the one piece of snitch, I'll go back for the second bit. It is my fault at the end of the day. I don't have to eat that much. It must hit people in different ways after they've lost somebody so close. I've looked at food as a, a bit of a comfort. It's hard to explain. <laughs> I want to be there for my brother's kids growing up and hopefully walk them down the aisle one day because their father's not going to be here. I just don't want people looking at me in funny sort of ways where they're actually at the point probably are laughing at me. It gets to me a bit.
Today is the beginning of the rest of mixed life. And first stop is some tough love from this man. I don't know how the guy's alive. He is a massive man. I'm lost for words. He is honestly walking death. Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. I'm here to turn your life around and make it better. Beautiful. I'm going to weigh you first. Yep. And go from there. OK, step on for me. Nice and easy in the middle. Holy dooly. Two forty seven point three. I've actually almost couldn't believe it. I didn't think I was didn't think I was that heavy. Crazy. Crazy. Big number. Big number. You just don't realise how heavy you are till you actually confront it with it. it's in your face and you you can't tell anybody no lies, you know, like if somebody standing over you or looking at it too, so you can't jump off and say, no, that, that's telling lies, it's not. This will tell me your resting heart rate. Oh, look at that. 132. Walking time bomb. Yeah. Really. What should be that be? Like 70 to 80. Should... You can imagine the stress on your heart already. That's working twice, that's what it should be. Twice. So, half your lifetime already. Yeah, yeah. It was very confronting. Just the fact that I could just drop dead. Over the next 40 days, Lee wants Mick to lose 40 kilos. And that will take pain. What are you doing this for? Me or you? Huh? And more pain. <laughs> Mick Spaulding's first step on the scales in four years has been a sobering shock. 247.3. Crazy. Crazy. Big number. Big number. I don't want to be dying when I'm in my 30s. I don't know how I let it happen. I'm lost for words. He is honestly walking death. Mick's brother died of a massive heart attack. His father has obesity-related diabetes. Now the lives of this fat family are about to be turned upside down. Mick. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. All right. What we're going to do now, guys, is go through and throw all the garbage food out. So I need you to know that you're 100% behind this. Oh, yeah. So you're going to help him the whole way through. You're a support system for here. I'm going to help you. Yeah? yeah? All right. So cupboard by cupboard, team. Mango slices full of sugar. Pancakes, Sunday morning fruit, chocolates, sweets, lollies galore. That's for my cappuccino. It's gone. Nick, get in there. I'm gonna save you in so you can go to That's my cook. <laughs> not anymore. That's my tea for tonight. Get rid of it, Get rid of it. You're not having it. Get rid of it. I want your dad to change the world because he's got type 2 diabetes, so he needs to change just, just as much as me, I think. Get rid of it. What am I going to have tonight? Get rid of no. it. vegetables, mince, off you go. But he could have left the meatloaf because I was looking forward to that tonight. Thank God I had a piece that, yes, he. I was going to have a meatloaf sandwich for lunch, I should have. How challenging is it going to be in the kitchen with the three of you in there? I can see a few arguments over the next couple of months, but um, I'll put him in his place. <laughs> <laughs> really is feeding to die. So I need you 100% behind this. Oh, yeah. I'm behind. I'm, 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 no, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. We're all going to do it. My wife will put Mate, this is your big thing. This is your new... Home gym for the moment. Beautiful. Beautiful. Lovely. Yeah, put your feet up into the pedals. And the other one. Feet inside there. Okay, hold on. Okay, good. Now, pedal. We're just going to see if we can pedal for five minutes. 
at this easy speed. Nothing fast. In 20 years in this game, I've never seen anyone as dysfunctional as Mick physically. Hitting the two minute mark, and the heart rate starting to elevate. Yeah, and you can start to feel that yourself. Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is slow down. I want you to take your feet out of the pedals. Okay, and just get your breath. Nice, full lungs. <sighs> Fill them up. <sighs> He's in such a state of disrepair, which is unsafe. One, two, three, nine, and 10, rest. Okay, sit down for me. What is it? 140. 140. Just simple movement again. Yeah, disappointing that I can't keep going, but it's only for a little while, minute. Hopefully, give me a month or so and I'll be able to go for 15, 20 minutes. So, one day at a time. Mick has a long, painful road ahead, but he's already creating a shrine in his attempt to cheat an early death. I'm just keeping my brother's tie in this room, mate. It's just uh, something when I'm doing it tough, I can have a look and make me keep going. And push. Good, now. Step down again for me. Good. The first weight loss target is 40 kilos in 40 days. That sounds a lot, but it's just 14% of Mick's body weight. Mick's grabbing this by the horns and just running with it, and he you know, is embracing this 120%. It's unbelievable. But this super obesity battle is going to take more than just exercise. Mick needs to change his entire life. Are you going to help me shop today? Yeah. Yeah? Should we get Uncle Mick some really healthy, good food? Yeah. Yeah? Fresh fruit and veggies are absolutely great, OK? Yep. You want to be snacking on fresh fruit, and fresh fruit can be part of your breakfast or when you feel like a dessert, yep. then fruit's your, your absolute best option, OK? Yep. Now, apples are one of the best kind of snacks, Mick, because yep. they're, they're oh, really slowly absorbed. They've got lots of fibre in them, and they have loads of antioxidants. We're going to go for four. He knows he's got these significant health issues in his family. So one of the things I'll be teaching him is about, you know, you don't have to follow a low-carb diet. It's actually about choosing the right carbs, and that's absolutely crucial. I'm trying to think positive and just whatever I'm taking in is good for it. It's, I'm being positive about knowing it's actually doing me good and not trying to put that negative feeling into my head that it is boring food, because if I start thinking it, I'll start believing, and I don't want to start believing that it is boring food, and, which I know it's good for me, so I'm just trying to have that positive attitude, mate. It's four weeks since Mick began this challenge. Every day, he has to resist temptation and make the right food choices. You got any cravings or anything? No, I haven't had any cravings in yeah. the last few days, which has been good, so hopefully I don't get any, so I'll just keep, keep with the healthy stuff. Yeah. And tell me about just girls, relationships. When was the last time you had a relationship? Um, oh, a few years back now, probably about five years ago now, so, yeah, it hadn't been much... In relationships, I've seen a couple of girls here and there, but nothing, nothing that's been steady or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, that, obviously that's got a lot to do with just how you feel about yourself, I suppose. Yourself yeah, yeah, that's right. I just, I just haven't been putting myself out there even to meet yeah. new people. Or, yeah. I would love to if I come across the right person, maybe mm. settle down and have a kid or mm. kids. If someone's out there, they'll find you. Sort of find each other yeah, somewhere along true. the line. <laughs> They're good. Mm. They're good. Mick's first target was 40 kilos in 40 days. Today, he'll weigh in for the first time. Yeah, I was a bit nervous knowing it's going to be the weigh-in today. I just, I've never really liked getting on the scales all my life because I've always known I've been a big boy, so it's it never really pleasant to get on the scales and actually see exactly how much you do weigh. Mick. It's time to be weighed. It's been 40 days. How do you think you're going to go? Um, I think I've hopefully gone all right, mate. I'm just hoping to be... If I've lost 10 kilos, I'll be, yeah, I'll be really happy with that. Yeah? So I'm planning on doing 10 kilos a month. So that's 100 kilos after 10 months, so... Mick, you'd be happy with 10 kilos, right? Yep. I wouldn't be. Mick, step up on the scales. <laughs> Thank you. 
40 days. A lot of sweat and tears in that time. You weighed in at 247.3. Yep. Your weight today is... 40 days. A lot of sweat and tears in that time. You weighed in at 247.3. Yep. Your weight today is 207. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, that's 40 kilos. Beautiful. Great effort, mate. Thanks Fantastic much. effort. 40.3, eh? Turn around. This guy has amazed himself. I think he's amazed me as well. Is that all I get? <laughs> that's not real. I just I can't believe it. Knowing that I've lost weight now and lost 40 kilos has just it's made me made me just feel not like a new person, but just as a person that just wants to keep going now and strive to strive to try to get down to his um, gut weight. Oh, I just, I just can't believe it. I was hoping in the background that it would be 40 kilos, and he did it. And that's that's just absolutely fantastic. Just, I don't know, just very emotional because I'm so happy for him. 40 kilos is an amazing result. I'm serious. Yeah. This is your brother talking here. Yeah. We've got a long way to go, but I'm not going to be happy now if you rest and sit back on your laurels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? You've worked hard to do this. He's there. He's made that first step. He's jumped the mountain. Now there's a mountain to climb, but I believe he'll do it, and I think he'll do it really well. This is the last time Mick will see Lee for a month. He will be on his own. Every day will be a new challenge. You ready to go? Yep. You ready? Yep. Let's go. Carrying all that weight, Mick walks at just over one step per second. That's half the speed of most of us. But right now, he's desperate for Lee's approval. It's good to be able to get up in the morning and uh, think I've got something on my mind to go and do and achieve, and it feels really good. Mickey, how are you going? Here, yeah, Rodney. Right, How's the back going? It's a bit tight. Well, when we get to this end, we'll give it a stretch. Get back into it, hey? Sit down. Give me your hands. Stretch your back out. Just stretch. Lean forward. Pull. It's frustrating, mate, because my back hurts when I'm trying to do things like this, and I know I can do it. Like it, I know I can walk to the end of that beach if my back didn't hurt. You know what yeah. I mean? We've had a problem, but yeah. it just gets frustrating with my back so tight, you know? Frustration's just part of the puzzle. Yeah, well, that's it, mate. I've just got to put up with it, suck it in, and. Yeah. Harden up a bit, mate. Let's walk back and let's just keep going. Yep. Mick is loving this, and I'm so glad because I'm pushing Mick into the area of thinking that he's got to get out there and participate in life again and not hide from the fact of he's a big guy at the moment because that's all going to change. Is it a bit hard? I know it's a bit hard. Work those legs. All right, good. Head it back over here now. I don't like to think of failure. So I never had that thought in my head at all. I'm not far to go now. Thanks, mate. I feel a bit sore, but I've done it. Remember, this guy couldn't stand up for more than three minutes when we started. Today, he walked the beach. He's only going forward, that guy. He's not going backwards at all. Do you think about your brother while you're training? Do you think about the changes that could have happened beforehand? Does it upset you? Does it make you want to do more? Well, I do think about my brother when I'm training because it, it drives me to keep doing it because I know I've got to be around for his kids and hopefully walk him down the aisle one day if my me, me old man's not around. So I'd love to do that for him just to be around for them. What about you? Yeah, and hopefully find myself a girl, mate, and walk down the aisle and maybe have a couple of tin lids and just be happy and be able to bring him to the beach and enjoy the beach life. and and um, show them what it's all about, how much fun you can have, which is free. For the next four weeks, Mick is on his own, with no Lee to drive him. And his resolve to lose even more weight 
is about to hit a major roadblock. The first four weeks, I just started off with, like a bull of the gate. I was going really well, going to the gym every day, and sort of built myself up to getting there twice a day and doing like a two-hour cardio session. And then, I don't know, I just had this sudden, just lost all my enthusiasm to get to the gym. Mentally, you want to, because it's in your head that you want to do it, you know, and, but your body just can't take it. Feels like I've gone downhill a little bit the last couple of weeks, which I'm disappointed in. It's hard to explain the temptation that you have when you're looking at food and you're saying to yourself, yeah, you can have that little bit extra. And it's hard to say no to food when you've been such a big eater. And, and you're always thinking that tomorrow's going to be a new day and something wonderful is going to happen to get rid of that food that you've eaten extra the day before. I wish I could just switch off and say no, but it's something in your mind just plays, plays, plays funny buggers with you, you know? I actually do need somebody to, to get me and push me and for I don't like letting people down. So if people are, are willing to put the time in for me, I want to give them a, a bit of satisfaction back of what they're putting into me. I, I want to give a bit back. So, yeah, I do need somebody to push me along, I think. Going into his second weigh-in, Mick almost fears seeing his trainer, Lee, again. So Mick, let's see how we've been going. Yeah. Okay, last couple of weeks. Yep, another way in. Yeah. See what you've done, what you haven't done. See everything's at. How do you think you've been going? Um, yeah, I think we've been going all right, actually. Had a couple of down weeks, which um, might maybe put me behind the eight ball a little bit, but nothing that I'm not too worried about, I hope. Okay, get on. Step up for me. What was your start weight? 247.7. 247.7. So, and our last weigh in? 207. What's 18 kilos on 207, Mick? What's 18 kilos on 207? 225. That's what you're weighing right now. Mate, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Nothing much, mate. Nothing. That's obvious. Nothing much. Mate, I was furious with him. The word fail fits in. He has failed himself. And I was very angry with him, disappointed with him. He is on a path of self destruction. And unless I pull him back and pull him back further than he's been pushed before, he will never understand. This, this is unacceptable. Let's go over the ring. You want to have a spa? We're going to sort this out. We're going to get to the bottom of this and work out what's going on. Because it's unacceptable. Yep. Reality is going to come back and hit you in the face. He's already lost a brother. Uh, he's on the verge of losing his life. And if he doesn't change it now, and this is the last time he'll get the chance again, he might as well walk away now. I want you to start telling me what you think you haven't done or what you think you have done, OK? Where do you think you're going wrong? What's happened? I just stuck it off, mate, I think, for a couple of weeks. Um, I don't know, I really can't tell you. I probably don't exercise as much as I should. Maybe eating a little bit too much. Hands up. How can you go so well then so bad? How can you? Hands up. When you're ready. There's no bully about this. This is reality. This is real. And if he doesn't change it, and he doesn't own up to himself, and he stops being the big kid who crawls back home and sits on the couch and does all these things that he doesn't need to do, rather than taking care of himself, hey, call that a bully, or call that someone who cares. Come on, Mick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What are you doing this for? Me or you? Huh? Who? Me. Yeah. mean it. Who? Me. Come on. He was doing it for my own benefit. It wasn't... I didn't take it the wrong way and 
I wish he probably would have whacked me a bit harder. Come on. What are you doing this for? Why? Why? For me? Why? For me? What did you start this for? Why? Who are you letting down? Better, better Who are you letting down? Myself. Who are you letting down? Myself. Why? Why? I'm just letting myself down. And me? And, and the people that love me? Where are your brother? Where are you doing this for your brother? Right? You've let him down now. It was a pretty emotional getting in the ring to flee. He's asking me who I'm doing it for, and I was, I was, I'm doing it for myself, and he's bringing up my brother and things like that. So I just, it just all oh, just got too much for me, you know, and I just, I don't know, just, as a man, mate, you don't like to cry, but sometimes you just, you got to, and I think everybody cries sometime or another. When do you need to stop? What's a wake up call? Right now. Right now? Yeah. Right now? Is any of this going to work? I hope so. Is any of it going to work? Yes. Right at the moment, mate, I don't believe you. I seriously do not believe you. Just Why, Mick? Not focusing. Not focusing? That's the whole excuse for your whole life. That's right. When are you going to take responsibility for what you've done? Hey? Right now. He wants to achieve 100 kilos. He wants to walk down the street. He wants to fall in love. He wants to have kids. This, what he did, doesn't say that. Probably things I really needed to hear. And, and what he was saying is just, was true. I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my brothers. I'm doing it for his kids. And probably that's what I really needed to hear and just to, to um, and just to let it out, mate, and just get upset about it. When you're ready, you come back to me. Just can't believe it went so good and went so bad. Just a couple of weeks and... I've got to pick myself up, mate, and move on. I think I needed them wax in the head, mate, to wake me up. You get another one if you do it again. Go get on the gear. Day one again. Day one. Sorry, mate. Step down again for me. Driven by trainer Lee Campbell, our 247 kilo man, Mick Spalding, lost 40 kilos in 40 days. Your weight today is 207. But then, left alone, he put back on a shocking 18 kilos in less than four weeks. What's 18 kilos on 207? 225. That's what you're weighing right now. Lee no longer trusts Mick to exercise daily, so he's going to monitor his every move. OK, Mick. Yeah, mate. This is your next best friend, right? Okay. Your online electronic personal trainer. Because you're too dependent on me when I'm not here, okay? Goes in your right arm, tells me everything you're doing. Sleeping, walking, how many calories you're burning a day. It's your new best friend. Okay. You'll download it, send it to me every night. Yep. Let's go. Lee's about to ensure Mick regrets falling off the wagon. So tell me what happens when I go away. You're too dependent on me. Got the infection in my leg. And... But you were eating wrong, you weren't exercising, you didn't exercise for weeks. Yeah, yeah, I know. Won't happen again, mate. Stop a sec. All right. The rest fits on your own. And you get. Move over. It's bothering me that I think he's got more there, but he hasn't been giving us more. Come on. <laughs> Not giving up now. Keep going. There's more in the tank, and we need to get that out of him every single day. He needs to start working on his own. <laughs> Push through it. And this is where he fell down last time. He didn't do anything while I was away. He put weight on while I was away. He failed again at you know maintaining a lifestyle that's healthy and a longer, happier, healthier life. Keep it going, Mick. 
Come on, get up over the hill. Okay, slow it down, slow it down. Breathe, breathe, breathe. 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 How does it make you feel when you're sort of putting in such an effort? It starts hurting after a while when you realise you're actually doing things and it's not happening, you know, like you just feel like, should I keep going or just throw my hands up in the air and I'm not sort of one that, mm. I don't like throwing the towel in, I, just, I never give up, you know, like it's, whatever I do, I try to give them 100%, you know. Come on, get the legs going again. That's quite the challenge, mate. It's a challenge, eh? You got to steer, mate. He may be discomforted by the size he is, and he did say, "Oh, a lot of times it just hurts too much." Well, you are that big for a reason. <laughs> Mick, 100 metres. 100 metres. What happened at the end here? I don't know, mate. Just done my ankle like nothing, nothing major, mate. Nothing major. Nothing going to stop you. Just a quick spill for a rest. You've got to help me out. You've got to start working that hard. That was great. Good job. But you know that needs to be every day. Every day. You need to finish this. And you need to finish it strong. Yep. It's up to you to start doing stuff. The eyes are the, you know, the window to the souls. This guy's gonna do it, and he's going to uh, prove to everybody out there that it can be done, and make a better life for himself. Probably still a little bit behind where I probably should be. I just had a bit of a speed up, and I just let myself go a bit, and probably didn't do as the training and eat how I should have been eating, and. Um, Unfortunately, he put on some kilos, and, and that was a real big wake-up call for me to actually just get right into this and just have a real good crack at it. It's been a different me, mate. It's just, I'm so focused now. It's just, it's just unbelievable. But behind all the big talk, Mick isn't losing weight and he's struggling to find the energy to keep up his exercise regime. The data from the sensor armband might tell us why. According to this um, the new armband and all that, it's telling me I'm only getting three, four, five hours sleep a night, and, which is probably not enough, mate. They, they say you need seven to eight hours sleep a night. So Mick needs to find out why he's getting so little sleep, even without realising it. Bennett. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. How are you going? What I'm going to do today is just ask some questions about your sleep. Tell me about your snoring. I've noted that I snored sort of all my life, but it's become a big factor at home now. But sometimes at night I fall asleep on the lounge and I'm snoring and overriding the, the volume of the television, you know? So oh, right. I notice when I wake up in the morning, if I get up and have a cup of tea in the morning and sit down to watch the, the morning news or something, yes. I'll doze off again right. after I've just woken up. So obviously I'm not getting enough sleep during right. the night. So what I plan to do is organise for you to have a sleep study, to, um, which means sleeping overnight in a sleep laboratory. There is a very severe form of sleep apnea where patients not only have very, very bad sleep apnea, but they also have what we call respiratory failure during the day and also during the night. And as a consequence of that, they are at risk of developing heart failure and all the complications that go with that. Remember, his overweight brother died of a massive heart attack. The doctor's words are a harsh reminder to Mick of what he's facing being this big. Yeah, I was a little bit worried what was going to happen, but as I got here, just all the nerves went away and just felt comfortable with everybody, so it was good. All right, cheers, buddy. Thank you. I guess it's not to beat around the bush. Your sleep study that you had during the night was very abnormal and it was consistent of having very severe sleep apnea. During the night, you are stopping breathing the 115 pauses per hour. That's not good. 
and with that, the oxygen level actually drops down to about 50%. But the treatment you need now is to use a thing called a CPAP machine. It's a device that you wear at night time, and it's like a reverse vacuum cleaner. Mick will wear the machine every night to stabilise his breathing and stop him waking up. Hopefully it's just going to give me more energy through the day to accomplish more, as in more exercise and getting up and around a little bit more rather than just um, sitting and watching television and doing nothing. And That's not actually helping me to lose the weight. Will more sleep and better sleep be the answer to Mick's weight loss battle? Or are even more desperate measures needed? Mick Spaulding has been dieting and exercising for 20 weeks. We've taught him how to eat well, to sleep well, and to trim the weight off. Keep it going, Mick. But now, it's up to him. And Mick is finding it tougher than ever. There's nothing else I can do for him. I've spent days on days and weeks on weeks trying to help this guy, um, supporting him, being there emotionally, physically for him, help all the way. Um, so, I'm at the end of the road with him. The weight-wise, I've just hit a little bit of a hurdle when I'm um, trying to find it very hard to get over. If anything's going to be holding me up, it's got to be the portion size, because it's not the eating wrong or anything like that. That is probably my biggest downfall, the volume. One minute he'd lost 40 and then he, now he hasn't, and, and I haven't seen him have McDonald's and things like that. That's why I'm so surprised that with him training so much that he hasn't gone down probably another 10 kilos. The whole family is in denial. They won't admit that Mick has no control over his eating. Clearly, his addiction is too powerful and he needs a different type of professional help. I was starting to get frustrated with sitting on this hurdle that I'm not getting over with weight-wise that I'm hovering around the 230, 235 mark. See you, I'll miss you. In desperation, Today, Mick will enter a special treatment centre. Lucky enough, Mick's checked himself into a place that specialises in food addiction. And it's a serious illness. It's a serious illness. He, he is just addicted to food. So he would come into train and say, oh, I haven't been eating, haven't been doing this. Well, he'd sneak out during the day and night and he would get back into the fast foods and just eat volume and volume of food. He's let me down immensely. Um, lying to me, but then admitting to me, and now finally admitting to himself that he has a big problem. My goal being here is to, anything over 20 kilos would just be just fantastic, mate. They'll put me up nearly, nearly the 40 kilo mark. Hopefully, um, everything just pans out how I'm planning on. By far the biggest factor in this, in, in, in their journey towards health is, is understanding that it's a mental game. Um, diet and exercise play an important role, but if, if, if the person doesn't have the right mentality, then you can have all the information in the world and it makes no difference. Or you can have someone with the right attitude that knows nothing about nutrition or exercise and they'll achieve results. I'm finding the food actually really nice. The portions I'm struggling a little bit with. We've got to sit down and eat. Our three meals and our snacks at certain times every every day, so I'm actually not one to eat so much. You never really see improvements on yourself, uh, but everybody seems to say they, they're seeing some improvements in me, so hopefully come Friday when our way in, um, I should hopefully get a good result. Mick's been at the New You Health Centre for three weeks. He's got no idea how much weight he's lost, but he's facing up to his obsessive eating. I'm not hiding anything like I was before. I'm not lying to anyone. I'm just honest and just want to live healthy and lose this weight. The experience that I've had here at New You is just unbelievable. Just a changed my whole mindset on my attitude on wanting to lose weight and everything. I have found a new happiness within myself. That's our Superman. Yeah. High five. I haven't been socialising much um, over the last few years, so I've been lucky to be socialising just to meet a new, new group of friends and, and have good times and have a laugh and and just, it's been great, it's just brought, it's brought happiness out in me, you know.
This is my um, fourth week at New Year, and it just it's a, the, my last weigh in for after the four weeks. So hopefully everything goes well. I'm, I'm a bit bit nervous to tell you the truth. So I'll be just I'm really waiting to see how I go. Well, you put in all the work, mate. Put yeah, in all the hard well, work. Mate, so. Yeah, that's right. I've done nothing. I'm not going to just say the mill. That's it. The numbers will be what what it'll be. But, you know, mate, so yeah, that's right. So. I'm just going to focus on how you're feeling internally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's right. All right, let's do it, mate. Here we go. Remember, 25 weeks ago, this man weighed nearly 250 kilos. It's nearly 200 days since Mick Spaulding set out to change his life and save his life. I'm lost for words. He's honestly walking death. He started this journey at 247 kilos. He's lost it. Your weight today is 207. That's not real, I just, I can't believe it. Put it back on. Mate, what have you been doing? You didn't hear what? What have you been doing? Faced his health issues. Your sleep study that you had during the night was consistent of having very severe sleep apnea. And finally started to beat his addiction with strict residential care. Now, he has to face whether he's winning or losing the battle. Two hundred and thirteen point four. Two hundred and thirteen point four. Yeah, well, there's no stopping me now. Seeing the numbers coming down, I just want to keep going and just push as hard as I can. 19.1. 19.1 in now. We'll say 20, mate. We'll say yeah. 20, yeah. I feel unreal now. I just, I, I come here with the expectation to lose 20 kilos. I'm only 0.9 of a kilo short. On your champ. Thanks, mate. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. In the 10 months we spent with Mick, he rode an incredible roller coaster. I didn't think it was going to be such a struggle just changing all the habits that I did have mentally and physically. He's lost 50 kilos, but it was never easy. What are you doing this for, me or you? Huh? Your life goes from one extreme to another. And when I was at my heaviest and just sitting at home, it was, just, it was like a light that turned off in my head. It was just nothing. I'd seen no positive things in life. I just didn't want to get out and do anything. You know, like that was probably the worst end of me, worst part of my life that I've fucking experienced. You know, I just that was probably the darkest point in my life, just being that that heavy. Mick's now lost enough weight to qualify for a stomach stapling operation, and his life has changed dramatically. Got more confidence now, I'm back at work, feeling fitter, healthier. Yeah, there he's there. Is that not? Just being able to do things a lot easier, which I couldn't do eight to nine months ago. Can't see without your glasses. <laughs> It's always good to get back in the truck, mate, because I always love trucks. I'm a diesel mechanic and always driven trucks and always been around trucks all my life. Everything starts as a dream, mate. you just got to make it a goal and then put it into action, I think. And a decent working life is not the only thing Mick has regained. The positive thing that I've got out of um, getting fit and healthy is um, the uh, getting an erection back again, which, is, which wasn't happening until uh, 10 months ago, you know, I just... It was just limp and wasn't happening and things, I was, thought to myself, well, I'm, golly, can't be washed up at 34, um, but it's not retired and it's back in, back in operation. But I had a, a funny experience the first time I got it back in operation was um, about to do the deed and um, it didn't last too long and she goes, well, you're a cheap shout. <laughs> I said, yeah, well, it's been a while, so um, give us a couple of minutes and we'll go around too, eh? <laughs> Tonight, we meet Wayne. For as long as he can remember, he's been the fat kid. The kid who got brutally bullied at school and felt nothing but shame. Obviously, growing up through school, you definitely get uh, teased about, like, my weight, like, name-calling and stuff like that. You learn to block out whatever you sort of... whatever you need to to sort of get yourself through the day. Even as a child, Wayne became the master of the cover-up. I always sort of learnt to put on a, the tough face, the brave face. I mean, it was something I never really talked about. 
and that made his life as the fat kid almost unbearable. I honestly think a lot of my childhood and stuff like that, I'd repressed to the point where I couldn't remember it because it was just the way I learned to cope with what I was dealing with. But that didn't stop this overweight little boy from becoming a fat teen and then a super obese man. At his heaviest, a massive 227 kilos. And then, a little over a year ago... I thought I had like a chest infection, a bit of a cold, and I was really, really short of breath um, to the point where I'd take sort of four or five steps and have to stop to catch my breath. Um, went and seen the, a GP, he said to order a blood test, just get a blood test done to see what's going on. And uh, he goes, I need you to go to emergency now. That's when I started to panic. So I went up, had a scan done, came back down, and he goes, yeah, you've got several blood clots on each of your lungs. How did that feel? I was in tears, I didn't know what was going on. I was sort of freaking out. That was my turning point. That was when I decided that I wasn't happy and I needed to change things no matter what sort of happened. In the next hour, we'll see Wayne's remarkable one-year transformation. You must be feeling amazing. The physical. Get it out. Mental. This is your future. And medical pain. I just wanted to get it over and done with. This is the true story of a man who has just one year to save his life by halving his body weight. I've got to change it for my health and solely for me. Wayne is a man who is simply too big. <laughs> 27-year-old Wayne Greenshields shares a house with his sister Sandra. As children, neither could understand why Wayne was so big. As time went on and no one was able to offer him a solution to his weight or a reason as to why he had the weight, that perhaps it started to become like a bit of a, a vicious circle in a way that he would take comfort in the food and maybe that contributed to his weight. Eating became Wayne's crutch, food his obsession. Now he's addicted to it. And despite the threat to his life, he can't stop binge eating. The biggest thing for me was obviously I love soft drinks, chocolates and ice creams. It'd be quite easy for me to sit down and watch TV with a packet of Tim Tams and next to the thing you're looking down, the packet's empty. I wasn't eating to enjoy the food, I was just eating to make myself feel better. And that's sort of what gets you into sort of the downward sort of spiral. Weighing in at 227 kilos, Wayne was not only eating himself to death, he couldn't exercise, play footy, or find love. In terms of just relationships and, and having a sort of a normal, loving life and, and being married and kids, you want to be a dad or what's the, yeah, what's the future hold? Like, I've always wanted to have kids. It's one of the things I've always looked forward to. And I think it comes down to me personally, like I'm not happy with myself. Um, I think that makes it hard for me to get my head around that someone else can be happy with me as well. He has so much that he hides because of his weight. I'm just looking forward to it all coming out and, you know, people being able to see the Wayne that I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Big sookie. Believe it or not, Wayne's already lost 35 kilos on a liquid diet in the hope of qualifying for a stomach stapling operation. But he can no longer do it alone. And that's where this man comes in. First impressions of Wayne, good looking kid. He's a big lad. Today I see a real hard time ahead for both of us, but a real rewarding time. As I was walking through the gym, it's a bit daunting. It's not a place that I'm comfortable in being. Hi Wayne. Hi, how are you? Lee Campbell, I'm here to give you a new life. How are you, Lee? When he walked in the door, I noticed he doesn't like looking at people, he doesn't like confrontation. Hidden behind not taking responsibility of who he is or what he needs to do. Come over here, let's weigh ourselves. All right, let's see. (laughs) 
189. Definitely feel that my weight prevents me from living my life to the fullest and being as happy as I can be. So, blood pressure, mate. 150 over 99. Do you understand what, what that's doing to your heart? For the normal average person, it's 120 over 80. So you're putting your heart under a huge amount of stress just by carrying this weight at the moment. The guy that Wayne is at the moment is the guy that uh, eaten his way to death. <laughs> Bang. Waist measurement, 170. You know, waist measurement over 100, mm -hmm. prone to more to cancer, all those different areas. He's in so much trouble. I mean, I can't even explain uh, the way he must feel. Wayne, you have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. You're so young. You're killing yourself. I think we're both shocked of how he is. Mentally, for me, this is going to be massive. Mentally, for him, this is going to be, you know, life-saving. I'm going to help him discover that person inside of him that he so wants to be, physically and mentally. He wants to be someone, and he is, someone who's very smart and very strong. I'm willing to work as hard as I possibly can for it. I was killing myself, and that feeling is the drive behind me and making me want to change the way I was sort of living my life to make sure that I'd never have that situation again. Over the next 40 days, Lee wants Wayne to lose 20 kilos, and over the next year, that will climb to 100 kilos. Not feeling good, get it out. This is a transformation you won't believe. Let's see. Wayne Greenshield's first step on the scales was the reality check he needed to get his life back on track. 189. So, blood pressure, mate. 150 over 99. The guy that Wayne is at the moment is the guy that uh, eaten his way to death. Trainer Lee Campbell is determined to turn Wayne's life upside down for good. And that will start with what he's putting in his mouth. Mate, your new life of fresh fruit and vegetables. Oh. Love it or love it? I love it. It's love good. It. So Wayne's eating habits and food, a lot of sugars, a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of you know, saturated fats. Dad has to go out. We're going to get him into the headspace of, OK, I'm going to go back and have a bit of hummus with carrot instead of a big burger or takeaway fish and chips. Morning breakfast, nice high in fibre foods, fruit and vegetables, a bit of yoghurt, some teas, no soft drinks at all. Yep. At all. Your lunch is you can steam all your veggies, packed ready to go at lunch, nice and easy and fresh. You know, no processed food at all. It was easy to get sort of takeaway and basically just have that for the main meal. Just very quick, easy sort of solutions to getting food rather than going and getting something healthy. These revs, RPMs, revs per minute, is what you've got to work on, nice and fluent. And just get comfortable in sitting on the bike and feeling as though, you know, you're doing a good workout. He's never exercised before, so this is all new ground for him. This is terra firma. He just needs to understand what he can do. And this is the exciting part. You've got, I've got someone that I can actually mould into what I think his vision will be for himself. You've got this beautiful, nice little hill area here mm -hmm. that we're going to walk up and down. The sculpting of this you know, young man into a big, strong, proud man started today. And this is the exciting part for both of us because it started. And we can now start looking ahead on the plan, what he needs to do to get him healthy, happy, and live longer. Good workout. Wayne has 40 days to drop 20 kilos, and his training will be relentless. One of those guys that puts his hands out and you know, you've got to take it and lead him down the path because, again, he's never had, I don't think he's had someone who's led him or he's been inspired by or for before in his life who's, you know, a bloke as well. At his peak weight of 227 kilos, Wayne was twice the weight of the average Aussie male. And if he ever wants to be treated like one, he needs to lose half his body weight in just a year. Today I was pushed harder than I thought I'd be possibly able to go. Um, Push parts sort of past the hurt feeling and sort of just got those couple of extra reps out and yeah, now I'm just trying to catch my breath and recover. But three weeks into his new diet and exercise regime, Wayne's fear of the blood clots that could kill him 
forces him into a dramatic decision. I can't do it just on my own. I can't do it with the diet, the exercise. I need some form of help as well. So went and seen Dr Michael France about a sleeve gastrectomy. You can see the little staples here. Basically, the operation involves reducing the capacity by removing about two-thirds of the stomach. I guess with you, Wayne, our biggest worry is, because you are so big, is that whether your liver, which is this thing here, whether that's shrunk down enough so we can actually physically get to your stomach. Wayne's already had one life-threatening condition associated with his weight, which could have killed him, um, and I think that was a big wake-up call for Wayne. All operations have a risk, but the risk of Wayne not losing weight and staying at his current weight are actually significantly higher than at the, the risks of the operation. Ultimately, I guess that the biggest risk is premature death. So the gastric sleeve is a permanent solution? Yeah, the gastric sleeve, if I go ahead with it and get it done, it's something that's not reversible. Right. Mm -hmm. You can never change back, you can yeah. never decide. So in that respect, it's, it's full on because you can never sort of mm. go back to eating normally or anything like that. In the next couple of weeks, Wayne will have to make that decision on whether to go under the knife. In the meantime, it's nearly six weeks since this journey began. Wayne's first target was 20 kilos lost in just 40 days. Today, we'll find out if he's on track. So Wayne, it's time to be weighed. Yeah. It's been 40 days. You've had physical challenges, emotional challenges. How do you think you're going to go? I would love the 169, but I'm sort of hoping anything in the lower 170s I'd sort of be happy with. OK, well, the scales don't lie. Are you ready to be weighed? I am. Step up. Your weight at the first weigh-in is 189. Your weight today is... 100. OK, well, the scales don't lie. Are you ready to be weighed? Step up. Wayne's first goal was to lose 20 kilos in 40 days. Your weight at the first weigh-in is 189. Your weight today, 171 kilos. Pretty happy about that. Mate, you should be ecstatic about that. 18 kilos. It's good to have that new energy boost sort of kick that just come out of finding out I'd lost that sort of 18 kilos since first meeting with Lee. But the real work starts now. Yeah. This is where we really get stuck into it. Work on that cardio, you start to work really hard on the rest of your life. All my hard work's being rewarded and shown on the scales. Well done. Thanks, man. Fantastic effort. Wayne's achieved so much so far, and could this go wrong for him? I don't think so. He has that much determination and that much self-drive now. He's discovered this inner person that he's not like. He knows now how to push himself. He knows how to find a little bit more. He knows how to face his fears. He knows also that the person he's becoming is the person he wants to be. And that's what he's been fighting for so long. Despite his early weight loss, Wayne's fear of more blood clots and an early death has brought him here for a sleeve gastrectomy which will remove two-thirds of his stomach drastically reducing its capacity for food. The lead up to surgery was very nerve-wracking. I just wanted to get it over and done with. Starting to feel really nervous now. Sort of helping just to watch the clock. It's just the waiting part now. Having that fear of, of dying, not seeing 30 years old, is the reason why I knew this time I had to make the decision whether I was going to succeed and live or I was going to fail and die. Wayne's stomach will be partially removed with just a tube or sleeve left, but his weight loss is far from a certainty. If he continues to eat too many high-calorie foods and doesn't exercise enough, the remaining stomach will stretch over time, causing even more weight gain. That's good. can take you through to here. Wayne could still end up back where he started. Because of my weight and uh, obviously I've had a previous health issue with uh, a blood clot, they were obviously concerned about me clotting. 
they were sort of expecting the worst. So have you got a goal just without? A goal. Yes, he's taking an upfront risk, but he's taking that risk with the hope that he'll have a, a long-term gain and that he'll have a much uh, longer life uh, and a much better quality of life. We took the bougie out. That's what we use to size the stomach. So that's how we work out how much stomach we're leaving behind. The stomach's shaped like a bag, and basically what we're doing is we're changing it from the shape of a bag into the shape of a tube. Um, so obviously that, that sort of reduces the capacity. Now we'll put some blue dye down just to check that the staple line's OK. And then we'll pull the old stomach out. So that's the, um, the stomach that we've removed from Wayne. That's the back or the, um, the stretchy part of the stomach. And what we've left him with is a tube. With his parents close by, Wayne is yet to wake up from the operation he believes could save his life. The surgery went really well, so that's something I was very thankful for. This is the tool that I needed to, to help me get rid of everything that I was carrying around. It really feels like the weight has been lifted. My relationship with food since the operation has changed dramatically. I no longer sort of have a drive to, to eat or a hunger drive, so to speak of. It's more solely just eating by the clock, eating because I have to eat. I can miss meals and not eat, so that's my main concern. But the danger of Wayne not eating enough and becoming malnourished is very real. He needs the help of our nutritionist. Should we go shopping? <laughs> Come on in. He simply is dealing with the fact that he cannot eat much food in one go. And because the major part of his stomach is no longer there, he's not getting the same hunger signals to the brain. Now, in a way, that makes it easier, but it also means that it's very hard for him to eat without getting stomach pains, stomach cramping, feeling really full with a very small quantity of food. And that can just make it hard to make sure he doesn't get malnourished. One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about with you is to make sure that you're getting enough protein because there's this sort of very small amount of food going in and a limited amount of foods that need a lot of chewing. But the other flip side of that is that they can go the other way and start not paying any attention to the nutrition and just thinking about how can I get the best foods that are really tasty to me in. I don't want it to be too thick and heavy for you because then you're going to find it hard to digest. Yep. There's a lot of fibre in there. So they could be having chocolates instead of something far more nutritious. So we've got to be careful with Wayne that we help him to be in that centre line where he still has enough interest in choosing good foods. That's nice. Yeah? Yeah, it's good. good. So this is just such a great way of you upping your protein intake a little bit without having to eat, you know, big chunks of meat that are going to be hard for you to digest right now. Wayne's kept up his strict training regime for more than two months, but this is the last time he'll see Lee for weeks. This once tragically bullied kid needs to be prepared to go it alone. First workout goal, two hours of exercise, straight, yep. and on a beautiful beach here. You ready for it? Ready as I'm ever going to be, mate. You ready? Ready. How do you think you've been going up till now? It's been going really well, but haven't pushed it for the two hours yet, so don't know how that's going to go. Might be dead by the end, but we'll get through it. All right, let's go. Kicking and screaming. Push me back. Good. Good, next one, push me up. You're not getting me this time. Push, 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 push. Well, the exercises Wayne needs to do and the mechanics of the whole program is to toughen him up to make him understand when he thinks there's nothing left, there's something more in the tank. Give me everything for the next 20 minutes, let's go. Everything, come on, pick up. Come on. Everywhere I run, you run. Let's go, up we go. And he knows there's more, but that's what he's never done in his life. He's never taken the next step to be that person or make a decision. Now I'm being this man. Now I'm being a guy that will be respected and I'll be proud of the skin I walk in. Every time that ball hits the ground, Yep. It's getting rid of some baggage. Yeah. All the bad stuff. All the things that have gone on over the years. This is the day that changes, everything picks up from here, yeah? That ball into the ground. Every time, it's getting rid of something. Get it out. Come on, mate. This is your future. This is your future. Every time that hits the ground, that's something everyone said. Everything's done. Not feeling good. Get it out. 
Wayne's hidden behind himself for too long and he's hiding the fact that he, he's scared of what he might be. It's something that, by well, the feeling, I don't think you can actually get rid of the feeling, but... The memories are always going to be there. Yeah. But you should build on that, that strength on that. That's what I'm trying to do. And you're doing it. You're doing it. Each day is a different step. And so the philosophy behind Wayne is exactly that. Letting Wayne become this man, this person, who he secretly, deep inside, knows who he is. You just got rid of the bad. Now we're putting in the good. And this is all about you and your future. OK? Uh, is this a man who can lose nearly 100 kilos in just one year? One remarkable year in which he must save his own life and find a completely new one. <laughs> Driven by trainer Lee Campbell, Wayne lost 20 kilos in the first two months of his new life. Pretty happy about that. Mate, you should be ecstatic about that. Then underwent stomach stapling surgery. The lead up to surgery was very nerve wracking. Just wanted to get it over and done with. Outwardly, his new fitness is paying off. Come on, get it out. But inside, his fear of being made fun of because of his weight remains. Every time that ball hits the ground, yep. it's getting rid of some baggage. My goal, besides the fact of getting myself healthy, is just seeing what it's going to be like to be 100 kilos, hopefully by the end of the year. That's sort of the driving thing behind me, just to experience everything again for the first time, not having the weight sort of in the back of your mind. Ever since being bullied as a fat kid, Wayne's avoided making himself a target hanging out with other boys. Now that's about to change. Check out, hard man on man. Being overweight, that's something I have always avoided was the groups of people and so we're gonna have to deal with that plus the, the fact of actually physically exercising. But the way to look at it is, I don't know what's gonna happen until you give it a shot, so that's what we're here to do. Team sports were once this young boy's worst nightmare. And now it's a young man's dream come true. It's a real journey of self-discovery, isn't it? I mean, you are rediscovering yourself as you're sort of losing size. Have you surprised yourself in any way? Yeah, well, I've never never played like a team sport and stuff yeah. when I was in school, but for years, like, I've been at barbecues and parties and stuff like that where all the boys would go out and have a kick of the footy and it's just... I've always sort of thought, no, nah, I don't need to do that. Why would you want to go run around like an idiot for? And it's like, I just did it for a couple of hours, had an absolute ball and, like, jumped back into the car and I'm sitting there and I've just, like, put the key in the ignition and I've, like, nearly, like, started to burst into tears and then I'm, like, just had this overwhelming feeling and so... Those sort of moments have been... That's euphoric. Yeah, it's been the best part of this journey. I know I've still got a long way to go to sort of make it through a full, full-on session with the boys, but coming from doing nothing to sort of half keeping up with the A's is a massive achievement for me and something I'm definitely very proud of. Wayne's always felt too fat to travel on a plane. Instead, he's hidden away and never left Adelaide. Well, I think it's just an apprehension just from being overweight and knowing that uh, airplane seats aren't exactly the biggest seats in the world. With his second weigh-in looming, it's goodbye Adelaide, hello Sydney, and his first training session with Lee in more than a month. Now's where the transformation really starts to happen. This is where you start to transform everything else now, physicality-wise. Brain-wise, you're there, now it's just all physical. So we're going to up the level, we're going to go back to the start where we find this man inside, right? Step out of the shadows, into the light. Look up to the front, four, five, I've got you. Now, you're starting to visualise and feel how good it is to feel great and strong and be proud of the man he's becoming. He's getting out of being a little boy into a man now. And he's got a man's body, he's got a man's attitude, and it's about him being strong. Being in Sydney, like coming from Adelaide, never leaving Adelaide before, and not thinking anything about not leaving Adelaide, basically just 
awaken that sort of, I need to go out and see things. Like, I need to get out in the world. That rehatching myself and building a new identity as the slimmer, newer version of Wayne, like, he loves to travel. And Sydney was the first destination on a very long list. It's more than two months since Wayne's last weigh-in. His drastic weight loss is obvious in the excess skin now hanging from his body. Six months ago, he was more than 220 kilos. Two months ago, Wayne was just over 170. Now is the day of reckoning. To keep up his goal of losing half his body weight in a year, Wayne needs to lose at least 10 kilos. Training kills me every time I go out and train, but anyone can go out and train. It's getting yourself sorted out where you can actually say, I'm gonna achieve a goal and know in your own mind that you are gonna do it. Wayne, up to the scales. Your weight today is... Wayne, up to the scales. The last time Wayne and his trainer met, he weighed in at over 170 kilos. 161.7. Pretty happy with that, mate. Pretty happy? Pretty happy. Over the top with that. Absolutely destroyed it. Remembering this guy was in critical need of a different life. He's gonna die. It just shows me how much will this guy wants to be this man. Now, if that's not inspiring and motivating for me or him, there's something wrong. All that hard work you've been doing, mate, fantastic. In eight months, eight, more. Wayne's lost more than 60 kilos. Every time that ball hits the ground, yep. it's getting rid of some baggage. Each day, his fear of death through more blood clots fades a little more. But Lee wants the man inside that once super obese body to embrace life like he's never done before. Morning, Wayne. -o. Morning, Lee. How are you, mate? Good, bro. Okay. Where are we off to? It? A lovely time in the morning. Mate, still a surprise. Head down the road, I'll direct you the way. Nice. Putting myself in sort of an uncomfortable situation is one of the things that I've avoided a lot from being overweight, so I was definitely looking forward to seeing what was going to happen this morning and what we had to do. We arrive at the fish markets. It's about Wayne discovering the man that he wants to be. So the new experience is just that, getting out, working in an environment that isn't stuck behind a desk, and he can now explore and then think, geez, no, I can do this. I'm actually a man. Better keep up. I think these blokes will give you a very hard time if you don't, mate. Come on, Wayno. Keep up, Wayno. You've got to keep these. You've got to keep those, mate. Stuck to the ice, mate. <laughs> the guys in there took to Wayne like fish to water. They loved him. They embraced him. They just revved him on the whole morning. And he worked the best out of all the scales guys. The best part about it was having a challenge laid down six months ago. I, I definitely wouldn't have kept up with the auction and done anything close to what I did today. Wayne, you've only got a, a ton to go. You nearly moved a thousand. Oh, you said you're not... Yeah, the last fish you got to christen, mate. Yeah. All right, Wayne. This is where he's evolving into this man and becoming this man and being proud of what he's done. And I'm very proud of what he's done. Hands out. That's 25 kilos. Hold that. Don't drop it. Guys, that's how much Wayne's lost since he started already. Do you reckon you've found the key for you? You know, you've reached a, a spot, I think, where you've, you've realised what it is you've been holding on to. I'm not locked in now. I've opened myself up to being able to be, to change. And I think that's the best way of putting it. It's like, it was that very closed minded sort of thing of everyone knows how you lose weight, you eat right and you exercise. And that's when I sort of had that health scare and went to hospital and coming out of hospital and that's what I thought I had to do. Sort of open that door and as I'm starting to realise why I did certain things and overcoming the reasons why I did those, I think that door is getting further and further open. But there's one part of his transformation 
that Wayne is still desperately unhappy with. Since I've started to lose weight, I can't see a great deal of change, but like there is certain parts where I do notice I'm getting smaller and um, one of those things is like with my arms, a lot of loose skin and stuff on the bottom of them now and obviously with the extra weight and stuff I was carrying was filling out that extra skin and extra bit there so that is one of the areas I can see a change but it's still something I'm not happy with, I've still got a long way to go. Like everything seems to be sort of sagging down a bit lower. And that's starting to be really, really noticeable. So my next goal would be to obviously to look into that and to see what I can do about getting that removed. A month later, Hello, Wayne. the ever-shrinking Wayne must decide whether to take another drastic step towards a completely new body. Today we're at an appointment to see the skin surgeon, just to see where we can go from here and find out what they can do with the loose excess skin, obviously getting it all cut off. I tell patients just to be cautious and not have expectations which are too high. Only ever having one operation and that was basically complete success. I think that sort of inspired me with a bit of confidence that I wouldn't usually have. You've certainly got arm folds or the bat wings, mm -hmm. breasts. Mm -hmm. There is an epigastric fold. He's got about 15 kilograms of tissue which will be eliminated from the equation just through the excisional surgery. Your most prominent fold is your apron of, of skin and, and fat. It's a daunting prospect if you wanted to remove all of the spare skin. Because it's gone from such a massive sort of size down to hopefully a very small size, it's gonna be something I have to look at. So this is the volume of tissue that might be removed from you. These are nine and 10 kilogram pieces of skin and fat. This loose skin and sort of excess fat sort of attached to me, I know it's there and I know, it, I know it's big, it needs to be cut off. So this is sort of what I was expecting to see. People still die from such procedures. And so it shouldn't be taken lightly. But then again, you have to ask yourself, what if one exercised and dieted appropriately, but found that they were dripping with aprons of skin. Would you not wish them to go that extra step to improve their self-esteem? It becomes a value judgment then. I know it has to be done, and it's part of the sort of process of what I want to do. At the end of the day, it'll get to me, my end goal, where I want to be. And we're about to see... So I've been cut pretty much all the way around now. ..just what happens at the end of Wayne's remarkable one-year journey. From the fat guy to the man he longs to be. Twelve months ago, Wayne Greenshields weighed 227 kilos. The guy that Wayne is at the moment is the guy that uh, eaten his way to... Death. This super obese man began a journey to save his own life. Your weight today? 171 kilos. Terrified that blood clots would end his life, he had a stomach stapling operation. This is the tool that I needed to help me get rid of everything that I was carrying around. It really feels like the weight has been lifted. And as the weight fell off, uh, he finally started to overcome his bullied childhood. Every time that hits the ground, that's something everyone said, not feeling good, get it out. I'm just looking forward to it all coming out and, you know, people being able to see the way in the I know. When weighing in at more than 220 kilos, Wayne couldn't walk 50 metres, let alone run it. Less than 12 months later, he has a new goal. It's not 500 metres or five kilometres. Instead, it's a full 12 kilometre run for a man who never exercised for the first 27 years of his life and nearly ate himself to death. This is a major event for you. I mean, this is... This isn't just 12 k's, this is a whole life change. This is everything. I mean, when we started this, you know, 10 metres was a difficult point for you. Now, you bet the 12 k's, your whole life has changed. Everything is looking up. Life is good. 
Today's another kickstart for him. If he gets through this, he knows he's getting towards the end of the race. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. So away you go on your 12k journey. Sunday Mail City to May fun run. I think this run is a mental hurdle I needed to refocus me to get to what I want. He's always been able to. It's about the self-belief and the discovery of this guy who he is. Halfway, mate. Six k's. Four k's more than you've ever, ever, ever run before. You gonna get to the end? Yeah. Come on. Each kilometre I hit, it was, I've done that now. I'm still going. And I hit the next one. And it's like, well, I've hit this one now. Legs are still going. I'm hurting, but I'm still capable of doing this. So in my own mindset, it was the fact that I decided to start it running, I was gonna run it. I refused to quit. What a brave guy. I mean, this guy couldn't walk 15 metres before when he started. And could this go wrong for him? I don't think so. He has that much determination and that much self-drive. Now, he's discovered this inner person. You're going to do it, all right? Come on. I really feel like today, in this run, has let me let go of the, those emotions. And let me just push through to what I think I can achieve. Good job, mate. Good job. This is, you know, one of the proudest moments this guy has ever had in his life, and me also. I mean, this guy couldn't walk 10 metres. Now he's just run 12 kilometres. Great job, mate. Good job. Hey? Ran all the way. Proud of yourself? Today, just proving to myself and using that anger and emotion that I've got to get me to the end is something I needed to do to realise that now I am where I am, but I've got a place I need to be and nothing's going to stop me now. This guy's got the world ahead of him. He will do anything. He can do anything. Give me a week or so, I reckon I'm going to be wanting to do this again. Just the feeling I got at the end. That's, um, that's a priceless feeling. The man I met a year ago in the gym when we, Wayne first started this journey was this... He wasn't a man, he was just a, a person living. He's carried, you know, such a heavy burden of weight. Now he's discovered this new person that he has become and that he's wanted to become. So, Wayne, let's have a look at exactly what they've done. So first surgery here down the side, both sides to then bring the abdominal area back in. Yeah, so the next surgery is the chest to obviously continue to obviously flatten that out. So Second under one. this is a six pack. So I say. <laughs> yeah? Hopefully. If not, can I borrow yours? <laughs> you can borrow mine any day. <laughs> For the size Wayne was, it's absolutely impossible to get rid of that excess skin. He needs surgery. So a total of five surgeries you're going to have. Five, yeah. And between 20 and 25 kilos of weight gone. Did you ever think this possible when you first started at 227 kilos? To actually get here and to be looking at that 100 kilo goal and being a realistic goal is just mind blowing. Not only I have lost the weight, I've lost the excess baggage mentally of the problems I had. Good job, mate. Good job. Being overweight as a kid, being overweight as I've grown up, like I've been able to let go of that to enjoy my new life. Living? Yeah. Living again, living properly, living the way you're meant to live. Yeah. It doesn't just make me proud, it makes me uh, you know, emotional to see this guy travel the journey, achieve what he's achieved, and along the way get rid of all the burden, all the demons that he's had to deal with all his life and uh, move on. So one of the 227. My heaviest weight was 227 kilos, so that's the reminder for me never to go back to the way I was. And now it's my turn to catch up with the new Wayne, who can, at last, walk into a menswear shop without shame. At the beginning of the year, what size were you in terms of what was available in the store? What size were you? I'm um, an 11 XL. Do you remember what you were around the waist? Um, 170 when we first started. We are, that's sitting, 
at 123. Look at that. Look how much, look at that. Oh, I could fit in here. Look, there's no little person in here. <laughs> you've lost, you've lost a whole other self. That's amazing. Does that feel like? To look back at it now and to realise what I'd actually missed out on by having that size and living that lifestyle, it's very, sort of very upsetting to think about it, but yet very empowering to know that I was there and I'm, I am where I am now, so. What, what's the upsetting thing? What's the, the upsetting the thing? thing that you sort of, like, I go back and dwell on is the fact of I went through my teens, my early 20s in that lifestyle and not realising what I was missing out on. And looking at it now, even though I'm still 28, but looking back on it and saying like 10 years of my life, I lost mm. to, to having a weight problem, but it's my sole motivation stuff to keep me going, getting further is the fact that I'm not there anymore. Ah, oh, okay. What do you think, like that? Okay. I like the jeans. Yeah, I like the top. Four more skin removal surgeries will cut another 20 kilos off Wayne's body. What could be better than losing 100 kilos, except finding a life this young man never knew existed? I did everything to make everyone happy when I was a big person. Now I do everything to make myself happy. And what more could a young man want than a future full of hope? Tonight, we meet Monique. I don't realise how big I am. You don't realise the extra, because you live with it every day. In my mind, I'm about your size. You look in the mirror, but it doesn't click. Since her early teens, Monique's weight has ruined her self-image leaving her feeling like an outsider. At probably about 13, 14, I realised I couldn't keep up with the other kids. I wasn't fitting into trendy, normal clothes. I was fitting into clothes that were suited for older generation, because they were bigger. I did get teased when I was younger. It was heart-wrenching, um, the fact that I couldn't be the same as everybody else. So you want three bacon burgers? Yeah, and a family chips. I like the bacon and egg burgers in the morning. And hot cakes with syrup. This is a woman unashamedly obsessed with fast food mm. and fat food. My favourite food is anything that I shouldn't be having. <laughs> oh, it just, you bite into it and the Turkish bread shatters in your mouth and the cheese just essentially drips down the back <laughs> of your throat. And the worse the food is, the more she and partner Stu love it. The thing that irks me about this is we know we're fat. You can't hide it. It's not something you can dress up in black and go, well, maybe nobody will notice. To describe us, you have to use the word morbid. You know, we're both morbidly obese. So let me just ask you a minute, how do you feel about yourself? How do you feel about your body? The person I am now is the person that has travelled with me this whole way. Big bust, big bum, big thighs. It's OK. What, what were you thinking about then? Whether I'll be happy in my new body. In just nine months' time, Monique will marry for the second time, but her bloated body is also stopping her being the bride she wants to be, thanks to the cruel taunts of her father. When I was preparing for my first wedding, I tr went out and tried on some dresses. So I was so excited, we picked the dress and everything, and I raced home, and mum and dad were sitting out under the pergola, and I said, oh, I want you to come and see me try it on before I pay for it and my dad didn't move. And I said, are you coming? And he goes, no. And I said, well, why aren't you coming? 
and he basically said that I would, he turned around and said, you will never look good in a wedding dress. Now what we'll do, seeing that yeah. it was a little small, we'll do this other way. Maybe it's his culture and his nature, but I see some other fathers and I just go, why couldn't I have a dad like that? And it just made me rebel and made me angry. From that moment on, I've never forgiven him. I think it's going to be yeah. too small, so you're not going to get a good look. No, no. That's not, definitely not. No. We need a nice A-line dress for you. Yeah. I would love to be slim. I don't like just, the way it sits on your shoulders. No. It looks a bit weird. And it makes me look like a meringue. In my dreams, I would love to be just this beautiful, blushing bride that everybody dreams about and wants to be. But I have now this chance to be that. Seeing that yeah. was a little small, we won't do that one. I just want her to be happy. <laughs> and. I know as much as I love her and as much as she loves the kids and her life, I want her to be happy in herself. Come on, three minutes to go, babe. Right now, Monique's life is about to be turned upside down. Good work, Mon. You got five to go. In the next hour, we'll put her through 300 days of incredible physical <laughs> and mental pain. I'm sick of it. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Yes, this is a love story. Today, tomorrow, and for all the years to come. But it's also the story of a fast food addict desperate for help. I want to be here for another 30, 40, 50 years. Monique is a woman who is simply too big. <laughs> hey, Jazzy. Oscar, do you want a picky? 36-year-old Monique Dehan is a busy working mum looking up. after two children under two and Oscar. her stand-up comedian partner, Stu. So, yeah, big day. Uh, kids are in bed, so it's like wind-down time. It's to do a bit of ironing. At least I'm getting something done. Stuart's off working. You know, everyone wants to lose weight, and I do. But I, I like fat people. I especially like fat women. Couldn't eat a whole one, but I'd give it a go. <laughs> people driving past going, oh, look at that fatty boomba walking down the street or whatever. <sighs> I'm going to find out so much about myself that I didn't know. And it's scary. Today is the beginning of the rest of Monique's life. And... First off is some tough love from this man. My first impressions of Monique, she's moving quite well for a big person is what I thought to start with, but uh, she's going to find out the hard way what needs to be done. Hello, Monique. Hello. How are you? I'm Lee Campbell. Hi, Lee. I'm here to help you help yourself. Wonderful, thank you. Let's go. Oh, my okay. God. We are finally here. This is going to be the start of something absolutely fantastic. But in the other part of me, I was internally shaking, going, oh, my God. OK, step on for me. <laughs> 169.5. That's good. 169.5 kilos. Monique is delusional. Does she think this is healthy? Sit back down. I mean, she thinks this is acceptable. I can see this is going to be a battle between me and Monique. She's not going to make my life easy at all. She's going to question everything and she'll probably fail. Okay, so we're going to do our blood pressure now. I could feel just the whole anxiety building and it was just like, oh, I don't really want to do this, but I need to find out where I stand with my physical ability. 161 over 115. That's huge <coughs> hospitalisation. Really? If, if you're not careful. So do you understand just that resting heart rate being at 98, sitting down doing nothing, the pressure on your organs inside, mm -hmm. huge. You know, all my statistics and all the numbers and everything calculated together, I'm in deep sh dude. 
Over the next 40 days, Lee wants Monique to lose 20 kilos. Go. And that go. will take pain. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And more pain. No! Come on, three minutes to go, babe. Okay, step on for me. Monique Dehan's first step on the scales in years has been a sobering shock. 169.5. It felt a bit sad. The one goal I've promised myself, rain, hail or shine, is to get to the end of this and be half the woman I am. Physically, by the end of it, but twice as much as the person. That's not good at all. Okay. Blood pressure through the roof. Mm-hmm. Resting heart rate. Mm-hmm. A lot of trouble. Okay. A lot of trouble. I think Monique's fat because she's just been lazy. She's just not accepted that she has to change her life until now. Your body is about to shut down. It really is. Waist measurements. Mm-hmm. Too big. Just the pressure on your organs and internal as well. Mm-hmm. Medically, it's one of the worst I've seen in 20 years of doing this. Okay. It is just any more pressure on your heart and it could just go bang. So, glucose, sugar, high. Mm-hmm. Over six. You know why? Why? I just had KFC on the way here. You had KFC on the way here. Are you kidding yourself? I've had KFC all my life and it's going to be taken away from me. I just thought, you know, bugger it, let's do it. This is the last time I went. I'm on my journey. How I'm long starting has it been this. the last time? How many times has it been the last time? This is going to be the last time I said to myself, I'm on my way, Monique. I'm doing this. I know, I'm bad. Monique. I don't get the KFC thing. I mean, it's disappointing that, you know, she wants to have KFC before she comes here. I mean, where does the line stop? When you're a big person, every day there seems to be, oh, well, it'll start tomorrow, it'll be the next day. I mean, get real. This is just, it's not reality. You know, reality is the fact that you're going to die. I'm not such a sweet person, I'm savoury. So I eat packeted chips, hot chips. When we have pizza, we'll order an extra pizza so we can have it the next day, but sometimes it lasts the next day, sometimes it doesn't. And I find that anything that's in the fridge, I'll eat. Anything in the cupboard, I'll eat. Hello, baby. Hello. Monique and Stu are in love. In just nine months, they're getting married. So, let's start here, eh? But not before trainer Lee Campbell does everything he can to change the way they live. Let's see what you're hiding in your life. Chocolate shortbreads. Oh, all of a sudden they're there. Just <laughs> looking for some fun at the minute. Chocolate chip cookies. All yeah, there. Very good anyway. More chocolate thick formulas. They're, 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 they're all diet. They're still full of sugar. I eat the most when I'm bored. You know, I just want cookies, or I just want chocolate, or I just want chips, or I want whatever. Additives, sweets, cheeses, alcohol. It's overwhelming. Part of me just went, you know what? You don't need it. He's broken the bag. There we go. With Stewie, how is that going? Because I think it's a challenge on many different levels. How is he with you? Are you getting support from him? Yeah, it's, it's still as strong, but it's different. The fear for me is getting to down and just not being happy with myself, not being happy with all the effort I've put in. Yeah. And it's just a bit daunting sometimes. What did you have for lunch? Subway, Italian BMT. Today before she came, Subway. Yesterday before she came, she had KFC. She's addicted to fast foods. Last time I saw you, you had KFC. No more Subway, no more takeaway, no more takeaway. Okay, three normal meals a day, morning, lunch and dinner, Mm -hmm. two snacks. It's hard to imagine eating healthy because when somebody says to me eating healthy is rabbit's food. So what we're going to do now is going to warm up, we're going to walk down and walk back together. Monique's first target is to be able to run 100 metres. Walk down, walk back together. Doing it together, we're doing it together. (laughs) And over the next 40 days, she needs to lose 20 kilos. Okay, the problems that they're going to face these guys once they're exercising is 
Stu wants to be the Superman. They push too hard too quick and injuries happen. They give up too soon because their body gets too sore and it's a huge risk. For Mon, she just doesn't know how to exercise. So it's going to be very difficult. You've got to understand. Yeah. Time bomb, time bomb. OK. Walk down again, walk back up. Just him? Together. They have to start working as a team. If they don't work as a team, they're both going to fail. Even gentle exercise for these two is going to be a big challenge. We've got to get their heart rate up, we've got to do it gently, and we've got to ease them into exercise. That's it. Now, Mon, heart rate, what is it? 145. Walk again. And at the 160 end, hold up, Stewie. <laughs> 160 end, hold up. <laughs> Sorry. Hold up. Walk down, walk back. Now, if she's going to do this seriously, <laughs> The pain you're feeling now won't be half the pain if anything goes wrong, yeah? Yep. That's reality. OK, up and walk now. Baby, come on, you can do it. I know it hurts, but... It... <laughs> come on, baby, you've got to fight through it. Ten! Ten. <laughs> Nine. Hey, don't cheat. Don't even cheat a second. Five, four, three, two, one. You can stop. How do you feel? Oh, my feet are so sore. My concern with Monique is she finds everything she does a challenge without knowing she can actually achieve it herself. My greater concern with Monique is that she will never take responsibility for who she is. She'll always deflect this uh, importance of her own health and her own family to other people. Lee has banned fast food addict Monique from buying any sort of takeaway food. It's fresh food or no food from now on. I haven't been mentally ready to diet. You know, there's nothing better than sitting down to a plate of hot chips and, you know, a crumb of fish and calamari and prawn cutlets and just going, you know, and eating it. So we've got some gorgeous reds and yellows. So again, this is just a good example of the different colours are the different antioxidants. Mm. And this is your key yeah. to great health. One of the big problems that many women have in particular is emotional eating, and that's eating in response to anger, frustration, boredom. And we know the sorts of foods that they tend to turn to are also the ones that are most likely to be affecting their weight. It doesn't sound that pleasing when you're coming for off pizza and pasta bake and potato bake. Mix some berries through natural yogurt. OK, yeah. Be a lovely yeah, dessert that... or a snack in the afternoon. Yep, yeah, that's true. This is not weight loss at any cost. Yeah. I want it to be weight loss, but fabulous nutrition. Stu and I would sit down previously and eat a whole pizza to ourselves. And we'd easily have Maccas earlier on, and that's the four days' worth of food in two meals in one day. How's the um, portion control going? Because you've been on it for a little while now. How are you finding it? It's a bit of an adjustment. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean, realistically, you get to this size because you're used to bigger portions and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, you, you do it long enough and it's something you start to get used to. Yeah. With the kids too, it's just, you know, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. But it's, it's coming together. It yeah. really is coming together. And, you know, you feel fitter and stronger in yourself. And Do you? Yeah. I think yeah. also mentally, you just, you know, mm. you, you know you're working towards something. And I feel as I'm waking up, feeling a bit fresher in myself. I've been fighting for 35 years to lose weight. I want to be here for my kids and experience life with my kids and I don't want to let anybody down and I don't want to let myself down. Monique, it's time to be weighed. It's been 40 days. Mm -hmm. You've had some good physical challenges along the way. You've changed your whole mental approach to the whole thing. Yep. Are you ready to be weighed? Absolutely. Step up. What are you expecting? At least 20. At least 20? At least 20. If I don't get 20, I'll be really pissed off. 
Your wipe is... Step up. 40 days ago, Monique began this weight loss journey weighing 169 kilos. What are you expecting? At least 20. At least 20? At least 20. If I don't get 20, I'll be really pissed off. So to reach her first goal, Monique needs to weigh in at less than 150 kilos. Your weight is 153.4. But it's not 20! I wanted 20. Right, so and I didn't get 20. That gives you goals to work harder now. Yeah. She wanted 20 kilos. I think she realised two, three weeks before the weigh-in that she hadn't been doing enough. You know, she's got to achieve more now. We just go forward and work harder and more focused on what you need to do and focus on yourself. Yeah? Okay. Yep. And getting it done. Monique's deeply unhappy with her 15 kilo weight loss in 40 days. I feel a bit cheated, um, I think is the word that I could use. So she's convinced herself that she must have a medical problem. Can you climb a flight of stairs? Okay. Yep. yep. Could you run a short distance? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, I'm just going to attach a tube here. So all that air that you're blowing out, I can sample. I arrived today to get some testing done. Oh, I don't really want to do this, but I need to do it. I need to get it done. I need to find out where I stand with my physical ability. Great job, Monique. It is hard, but if you can put up with it, it's looking really good. My dad instigated into my head when I was younger that I would never live past the age of 34 because he's got diabetes. You need to stop, just let us know, though. He said, when you hit 30, you're going to have diabetes. And instead of being kind and saying nice stuff, which makes it somebody like myself rebel even more. OK, we're just going to slow the treadmill down. Slow and I think that's part of the emotional baggage I've got now is because of the way that I was dealt with when I was younger. You have normal fasting blood sugar, so you don't have diabetes. Your yep. cholesterol profile was very good with your fasting cholesterol and triglycerides, and the HDL cholesterol is good. So they're really good things. Yep. So I think, I think uh, that looks really good. Everything's fine, so it's what I put in my mouth that's an issue. So there should be no excuse for getting down to a small sign and being a lot healthier, a lot fitter in myself. Now, the real work starts. So, you're going to run 100 metres without stopping, yeah? OK, let's go. Go. Now? Go. God. I went and had my medical and my excuse is I'm just fat, obese. So there's no excuse for me to be overweight and to hold back now. I looked through all my goals and I went, you know what? Let's get this going again. Come on, just here. Just here. Just here, just here, just here, just here. Good. <sighs> Head up, breathe in. How's that feel? Really? Really good. Really, really good. That's it. Heart rate. 162. First goal done. <laughs> yeah. You should be very, very, very proud of yourself. I am. Congratulations. Have a 10 second rest. We've got nine more of them. You are? Nine more. <laughs> yeah. So, bring your heart rate down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is it. Just right here, right now. Despite the pain, every waddling step brings Monique closer to her goal of looking magical on her big day. The wedding. I just felt a lot of pressure on me to pull off a magical wedding and I felt though I had to live up to a certain standard and expectation. Go, 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 go. Look up, head up, look up, breathe in, enjoy. Ah, 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 over here. I would love to be slim. I want to be able to walk into bridal shops and just go, I'll try that, that and that. Because you're bigger, you can only go to about three shops in Brisbane. Go. Go, go. We might do another five. You're restricted on what type of a wedding dress you can have. Good work, Mon. So that restricts you on what type of wedding you can have. 
This is the new boundary. When you think you got nothing, find a little bit more. From day one yeah. to today. Yeah, it's amazing. Everybody goes, you have done so much and I can't wait to go, guess what, I've just smashed my goal. <laughs> You know what? Yep. I haven't stretched those muscles. Yeah, for a long, long time. Getting those legs up there. I love it, but... Oh. Like if the pain... God, that yeah. feels good! Oh, my God, he's a beefcake. And he's cute. What's the guff with that? She likes to, you know surprise everybody how successful he is and how uh, well she's doing. So I surprised her back and gave her another 10, 100 metres to run. She went and did that, just absolutely nailed it in one go. For me to be able to do as many as I did is just mind-blowing, you know, and that's one step. I'm so looking forward to the next goal. When was the last time you put yourself first? Never. I haven't put myself first for a very, very long time. Mm. I just don't have the time. Do you know what it feels like to say I'm a priority? Not really. And do you think that's part of this journey? Yeah. While Monique exercises up to two hours a day, someone's got to take care of the family. And that someone is doing? Stu. Oh. You cut your boat. <laughs> oh, geez, man. One of us has got to look after the kids. And because Monique is the main focus of all of this, it's me. Yeah, that's getting to me because Jazzy just wants to play with Oscar. Oscar who just wants to beat up Jazzy. Kicking her and punching her and headbutting her and... One of you's pooed. Have you pooed? <laughs> and then I've got to go to work and and living and, and all that, and all of that in a negative space because I've spent the whole morning saying, no, 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 no. I think it's really hard. I can go from ready to take on the world and I'm going to write that famous screenplay or, or whatever to I hate everything and, you know, that tree's looking mighty good at high speed. The whole pressure of the weight loss really got to him and other things too, that he wasn't the centre of attention and um, it, I would get excited about something but I felt I couldn't share it with him and that was building tension between us. But Stu has his own way of making it all about him. He too has taken to the roads. My motivation is me, because it's not necessarily about fitness, it's not necessarily about losing weight, it's about me. And nothing will stop him shedding the kilos except his soon-to-be wife, Moni. You're there, you're there, you've got five to go. Bride-to-be, Monique Tahan lost 15 kilos in her first 40 days. Give it here. Good job. But her drive to become a slimmer bride has put pressure on her relationship. Partner Stu has now become obsessed with exercising too, and Monique's not happy with the competition. He so wants to be the main focus about this. Trying to impress the boss with my black stockings. But look at those cars, come on. Even there, how to find it, eh? It's getting to the stage where I can't live like this for the rest of, of, the, of, of the, 12 months. That it's and take. Yeah, and the rest of my life with him, if I get the attention and get something special, He's just gonna, you know, not get excited for me, not gonna get motivated for me. Everything was just getting too much. You know, the pressure from my partner. And I was so stressed. So very stressed. Hooray! Wow! <laughs> just days before her second weigh-in, Monique has gone completely off the rails. Tell me what you can do. And any excuse will do. When I'm vulnerable or feeling low, I do tend to snack a bit more. But I overeat also when I'm happy. When I go out and I'm with friends and I enjoy dinner and I'm enjoying company and you, you just lose track of everything and I overindulge. <laughs> Two and a half months have gone by and Monique should have lost a total of 40 kilos. 
I came on. Step on the scales. It's time to be weighed. You were 153 last weigh in. Mm -hmm. Today, 142.8. Oh, 10.2. She's only lost 10 kilos with this weigh in. Last time was 15 kilos. I hope this isn't a trend of Monique not losing weight as we do weigh ins. Monique's lost 25 kilos in less than three months. Oh, don't you start. But her relationship problems are giving her an excuse to give up. So thin, they don't do a full length. Stop it! I'm sick of it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I'm stressed as. Monique? Yeah, I know, but there's no need to go off. Like yeah, that. there is. But Lee is determined this bride to be won't be giving up yet. So today for you, mm -hmm. surprise and a challenge. Okay. So let's blindfold you. All right. Stay right there. Mm. I believe in a past life oh. that you used to have something to do with VWs. Yes. Yes? Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh. How did you, how did you do, how did you get that? We'll tell you all about oh. that later. Today's challenge, <laughs> Mon. Yes. Is you've got to push this car no! with me in it. No! With me in it. Over the quarter mile against the clock. No way! A longtime lover of the legendary VW Beetle, Monique now has to actually push one around a racetrack. Oh my god. And she has no idea of the surprise that's inside. Before Mon got there, the surprise that I'd said also, apart from pushing the vehicle down that speedway, was putting Stu in the back of the car. In you go. Quiet. So there wasn't just my weight in the car, there was Stu's weight in the car. So there was an extra 200 kilos you had to push. Don't get out okay. until I tap you. Go. 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 Push. Now you've got to get your speed up. I need a good kick in the bum. Keep going. Keep going. In my dreams, I would love to be just this beautiful bride. Keep going, you can do this. I want to be half the person I am today. Come on, Mon, so close, come on. Rain, hail or shine, I want to get to my goal. Come on, come on, come on. Good job, keep going. We're there, 5.35, yeah! <laughs> Okay, Stewie, had to come. Oh my god! Here we go. Your oh next challenge, god. you two. Oh. Under five minutes, back to the top. Go, girls and boys. Come on, Stewie. Come on, let's go. Push, 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 push. Start working, Stewie. Oh, too much effort. Let's go, Mon, let's go. Help him out, help him out. Mon got three quarters at the end and pulled out. Stu left his partner behind. 100 to go, Stewie. It was bad. Good job, Stewie, good job. I could have killed him. Head up and breathe. He's taking one. over. He's now passing Mon in the want or success of being <sighs> uh, the weight loss champion here. Come on, Stewie, come on. Good job, Stewie. <sighs> A disgruntled bride in weight loss hell and a motivated groom who let nothing stop him. Will this relationship ever actually make it to the altar? <laughs> Mum of two, Monique Dehan, has lost 25 kilos in her first 80 days. But her desire to be the centre of attention has turned into a bitter battle between the fast downsizing groom and his desperate bride-to-be. These jeans, I put them in the dryer to make them shrink. And then once they've shrunk, I can wear them for a couple of hours before they get ridiculous. Not a competition. I know. Watch, watch, watch. You ready? These used to be not tight, tight, but comfortable. <laughs> So there you go. Three months ago, 
Monique's stand-up comedian partner was all for being fat. But I, I like fat people. I especially like fat women. Couldn't eat a whole one, but I'd give it a go. <laughs> now he's come so far, he's even entered a triathlon. I am a lot healthier than I was. I feel better about myself. Part of it for me is to have the goal, and the goal has been first triathlon, and I've got a couple of other things, runs and things, that I want to achieve. It's not necessarily about fitness. It's about feeling good within the skin you're in. I need to sit down. <sighs> Stu's now left everyone, especially Monique, wondering just whose show this is. But I'm starting to think about, well, what would it be like if I was a personal trainer or uh, a, a, a sports psychologist that can help people in my situation achieve better results and just feel better about themselves. But if they're going to make it up the aisle in just a few months, Stu needs to get his bride to believe she's number one again. What I've realised is when you start to lose weight, you actually start to find out who you really are as a person. So I've actually written a song for my lover fiance Monique. The song is called Half the Man. <laughs> Don't wanna be your knight in shining armor. I heard the first Don't line of it and I was like so emotional. Heart when I'm with you. Like he wrote it specially for us. If I could show you help the man you see before if I could give you and he sang it to me and only me and just the words and that just meant so much. From Stuart's side of things, everything just started to change. Stu's now promised Monique she will be number one again. He said to me, at the end of this, everyone's going to be focused on you. You're the one that's going to have to lose the most weight from the pair of us and you're going to be the centre of attention and that, and that just nearly, <laughs> um, that was amazing. He's accepted that he doesn't have to be the centre of attention for him to enjoy it and it was just like. Monique's decided to go it alone. She'll be the beautiful bride she wants to be. The challenge I set Monique was to run to the island and back, King Island and back. God's been known to me, she wanted to do it on her own. So she decided, go there and back, see how she goes. And nothing will stop her. Not physical pain. I just felt this phenomenal feeling of just, I can do this, don't stress about it, get into it, get on with it and not those bitterly remembered words of her father. He turned around and said, you will never look good in a wedding dress. And for him to rip that out from underneath me, it just hurt me so, so badly. I was let go of having to prove myself to him. But I suppose part of me still wants to go, I did it on my own, I didn't need you, I didn't need your your words of encouragement as to say that weren't encouraging at all. But I just want to prove to myself I can do this without anybody else. Oscar, save me, my little man. Thank you. the water, Oh, I love it. I know it. Wow. Life is now a fast-paced mix of wedding plans... See, and that makes you all tucked in neatly. Yeah. ..exercise and more exercise. Oh, that's a push. And on the day, can you get rid of the bag? Like... What we can even do is just put a little bit of highlight. I think that looks great. Yeah, oh. that looks better. I need to ask you a few questions. First of all, what I'll do is do you a sketch and send it back to you with what I think you should do. Serve it with a bit of creme fraiche and some strawberries. Okay, wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Ten and switch. Yeah. Three. But like any bride, 
It's the dress that's the most important part of the big day. Beautiful long train. And it's not just the dress, it's how she looks in it. She's never had that inkling to lose weight and all of a sudden it's, it's happening and I can't believe she's actually doing it. I never thought I'd see the day. i to get a boob job. <laughs> Monique started this journey at 169.5 kilos. Last time she weighed in, she lost just 25. Mon, how are you? Good, thank you. It's weighing time. Yep. How do you think you've been going? Very good. Very good? Very good. Why? Because I've been working really hard and watching my diet and, you know, I'm, I'm dedicated. It was a bit nerve-wracking. Can't wait to be weighed. I can't wait to be weighed. Step up. On, started at yep. 169.5. Your weight today is. It's been nearly 10 months since Monique Dehan set out to save her life for the sake of her young children. Any more pressure on your heart, and it could just go. I don't realise how big I am. You don't realise the extra because you live with it every day. She started this journey at 169.5 kilos, but failed to reach her first goal. 153.4. Yeah, but it's not 20. 15. We know we're a lot more to go. <sighs> but this bride-to-be would do anything to walk up the aisle, proud and beautiful. Head up, breathe in. No! She longs to prove wrong the devastating words of her father before her first wedding. He turned around and said, you will never look good in a wedding dress. From that moment on, I've never forgiven him. Monique eventually overcame her addiction, but has this turnaround really worked? Monique, it's time to be weighed. Step up. Mon started at yep. 169.5. Your weight today is 126.3. You are down 41.7 kilos. Yes! Good Winner. job. Good job. <laughs> That's just phenomenal. Yes! Unbelievable. Wow. You were. Holy hell! 30 centimetres. Around your belly. That's phenomenal. That is cool. Awesome work. Over the ten months, she rode an incredible roller coaster of emotion. It's scary. Wow. <laughs> I can't live like this for the rest of my life. And love it or hate it, Monique lost 41 kilos. And her beloved Stu did even better, of course, with 43. All of it was about this day, their wedding day. For today, tomorrow, and for all the years to come. You are now my life partner. My beloved. My beloved. My friend. With this ring. With this ring. I do wear it. And even Monique's dad only has praise for his beautiful daughter. Monique is a very charming lady. And I said to my wife, gee, she looks good now. And you may kiss your bride. I felt great about myself. Okay. I'm a lot more confident in my abilities. My strength is phenomenal now. This is like a huge step for me. Monique's a glorious being. She's a, she's a beautiful girl. She's beautiful everywhere. She's beautiful, caring, she's beautiful. The steward, I love deeply, and when I think I'm at my life now that I've got a partner that supports me no matter what decisions I make. We just love each other and can't keep our hands off each other. You know, you can conquer anything. Oh, God. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> it's great.
as long as you get to the end of it and go on, I've given it all I can, you're a winner. You're a star. They are eating themselves to death, and that's why we're here. Each of these Australians has joined trainer Lee Campbell on a life-changing journey. Get up, get up, get up. Excuses out the door. For some of them, it's also been a lifesaver. Everything starts as a dream, mate. You just got to make it a goal and then put it into action, I think. With phenomenal results. I did everything to make everyone happy when I was a big person. Now I do everything to make myself happy. My strength is phenomenal now. As long as you get to the end of it and go on, I've given it all I can, you're a winner. Now, the journey continues. I want to have babies and get married. I know that in the position I'm in, that wouldn't happen. I was always picked on and tormented at school because of my weight, and I ate my way, I think, out of depression. People don't want to be seen with a fat person. Tonight, we meet Helen. There's lots of things that I'd like to do that I obviously don't do because of my weight, you know, like going and playing games with my son. In Helen's world, even the simplest tasks have become achingly difficult. She's so big, she can't avoid the stares and taunts of complete strangers. It doesn't make it any better when you get people that jive past and yell out, stop. <laughs> they don't seem to think, they don't care. Helen finds comfort in fast food. The more of it, the better. Can I get a um, value dinner box thing? And she puts on more and more weight. Yeah, I like takeaway. Takeaway is probably my addiction. Helen blames her food addiction for the painful memories that have haunted her for nearly 14 years. In 1997, I had a son. Um, he passed away an hour after birth. They were going to operate and remove him by C-section, but decided against that due to health issues and, um, you know, for myself, concerns for my, my well-being. Now she fears the effect her super size is having on her second son, who's being bullied at school. Reese was getting poked with sticks, getting called names and having to hear all the, you know, your mum's a fat burra. Helen's answer is to avoid being seen with her son. I just tell him that I have to work. It's easier to give him that excuse than to say to him, I'm not going because I don't want you to be teased because mummy's fat. But if she keeps eating like she is, Helen knows she may not be alive to watch him grow up. This is it. This is it. This is do or die. In the next hour, up, reach up, reach up, reach up. we'll put Helen through 300 days of incredible physical <laughs> and mental pain. She's in a lot of trouble. She's emotionally beaten. This is the story of a colossal-sized mother who can't stop eating. A woman who is simply too big. 38-year-old Helen Clark lives with her son, Reese and her partner, Phil. Would you like one? Two. No, one. For Helen, being big runs in the blood. Her sisters had a stomach stapling operation, and as long as she can remember, they were a family of tubby babies who turned into chubby kids and fat teens. I was aware of my weight as a child more from kids teasing and all that sort of stuff, so it made you aware that you were bigger than the average child. But it was the devastating loss of her firstborn at just an hour old that's made Helen wonder what she's been doing to herself. I came out from surgery to have my partner there with my son in his arms, dead. The baby had a serious chromosomal defect, but Helen believes she was too fat for the doctors to do a proper scan. I think about now, you know, if I wasn't my size, would I have had to go through all of that? Could something else have been done? Who knows, if I was smaller, could they have picked that up? How do you feel about yourself? I mean, you know, when you're honest and sit down. And you just want to give up. 
But then I look at my son and I can't give up. Helen's not only eating her way to an early grave, her weight's crippling her relationship with her surviving son. We'll go to Burton Wild, which for me will consist of probably just spending some time sitting around. Reese would love his mum to go on the rides with him, but she's now a safety hazard. It's a weight restriction because it, if you're heavier, it, you could go over. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they're set by all the weights and restrictions set by the manufacturers, so yeah. they've done all the tests and work. For gravity and so stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Helen's become a heartbroken spectator in her son's life. It hurts that I'm not out there doing it with him. Have fun! For him, these will be, this is the memory time. This is things that he'll carry forward to for the rest of his life. And if mum's not doing anything with him, there's not going to be many memories of mum. But this loving mother is desperate to change her life for her and her son. In 10 months, I'm going to be on those rides with him. I'll be racing him up the hill. He'll be able to say, mum took me on this and mum took me on that, rather than Uncle David or Phil. It'll be mum. Today is the beginning of the rest of Helen's life. And first stop is some tough love from this man. When I first saw Helen, I thought, my God, she's big. She's going to have a long way to go. Is she strong enough? I hope so, but we'll see. to save your life and help you get better. Thank you. I'm going to weigh you first. OK, step on for me. OK, Helen, the scale's only up to 180 kilos, so at the moment that means you're over 180 kilos. Yep? OK, I forget. OK. Helen was over 180 kilos. In fact, she's 189 kilos. She's a time bomb waiting to happen. To your blood pressure and see how you're going there. 139 over 93. So that's high. Which isn't good. Resting heart rate, 108. So health-wise, you are in high, high risk of dying soon. Heart's under that much load and that much work that you're a time bomb just waiting to go off. If you keep it up, you're not going to be here to see your son. Good old. Reese is my future. I'm living for him. To have someone tell you, you could die soon. You're a time bomb. That makes it emotional. Over the next nine months, Lee wants Helen to lose 50 kilos. And that will mean a mental and physical assault that'll push her to the limit. <laughs> 38-year-old Helen Clark's first weigh-in was an embarrassing shock. OK, Helen, the scale's only up to 180 kilos, so at the moment that means you're over 180 kilos. Yep. Her actual weight is 189 kilos, and the harsh words of trainer Lee Campbell have been a wake-up call. You always think about, oh, you're a time bomb, you know, you're just waiting to explode. But to have someone tell you, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> Helen's weight means she's too ashamed to even take her son to school. But now the lives of this family are about to be turned upside down, starting at home. Hello, Helen. Hello. How are you? Good. Welcome to your new life. OK, come in here. We're going to check out any other cupboard first. Bad food. My Hi, son's... chocolates. No, that's my son's school snacks. School snacks. Lots of sauces. We don't need all these cans. Start making fresh fruit and vegetable, chicken soup and those sort of things. Okay? Cordial, sugars everywhere. Fruit bars, full of preservatives, full of sugars, everything like that. Crisp. Bang. Okay, so even though they're right. Let's Crater. go to the thing, let's go to the fridge, let's keep moving through this one. Soft drinks, high in sugar. 
Even the Diet Coke? Even the Diet Coke. Coke. We don't want that. No soft drinks at all. Fruit juices have more sugar than Coke, or as much. Cheese spreads. My son's lunch. We're going to change his life too. You've got to start making his life as healthy as yours has to be. There's any hidden stashes anywhere. Chocolates, cupboards, beers, alcohols, nothing. Biscuits. No. Even though it's your son's lunch, would you snack on one of these? No. You wouldn't have one just while he's having one? No. Not one for mum, not one for him? No. Okay. There's no reason to lie to me. But in all honesty, you know, she didn't get in the position she's in from being healthy and fit and making the right decisions. Behind Helen's back, Lee has found the truth. Hiding in the cupboards were sweet chocolates, marshmallow balls. So I know she was hiding all of this and I had to go through the cupboards to find it and no big surprise here. Oh, thick and cream that go on the marshmallows. Figure that one out. She's come into me wanting someone to take control of her life, to lead her to the new horizon where the sun comes up and goes down. Another nice hiding place, the bin. Pizza, pizza, pizza. You know, the truth is stop being unhealthy, stop eating four or five pieces of pizza that you shouldn't eat. Stop having so much soft drink. Stop living an unhealthy life. Okay, Helen, come outside. Wow. Training equipment for you to use at home, so there are no more excuses for a new life at all. Mm -hmm. in the pedal. Easy. Up, 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 up. It's okay. Spin the foot around. Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha. Good. Have a bit of a pedal. Keep them going. Right, slow down for me. Have you been on a bike before? Yeah, I, we did the bike and I couldn't do it very, for very long, so yep. I and skipped did why? back to the... Just because of the knees and that stuff, like yep. the whole... Well, she's trying to play tricks and she's trying to manipulate things by saying that her knees are sore, her ankles are sore, all these other things are sore, but, you know, she's going to be in discomfort, she's going to be upset, OK? Reality is going to be a lot of discomfort just because of the size, mm -hmm. and we have to work that down. She didn't get to this state for no reason. So you're going to have to get your head around the fact of, OK, these are going to be uncomfortable or funny positions and things aren't going to feel right yep. to get through it. She has to accept and then get on with it. Each night you're going to come home, spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes on here, just sitting down, enjoying it. Yeah? Remember our commitment yesterday? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. The gym equipment's there, but I've still got to be able to try and get that time. You know, I'm a mum, I'm a full-time worker. I leave home at 6 o'clock in the morning. I get home at 6 o'clock at night. I have to cook dinners. I have to prepare lunches for the next day. I have to wash the clothes and, you know, fold the clothes and clean the house and sit down with my son and do homework and everything. So it's not a matter of not being able to do it. It's a matter of time, and that's not going to change. She's in a lot of trouble. She's emotionally... Beaten, you know. Physically, you know, people can always change physically how they go about things and what they need to do. It's about how they approach it and what they can, you know, find in themselves to make that change. And this is one of the big things. She needs to make that change. And she's, you know, already she's finding it very hard to accept where she is and what she wants to do. And that's going to be a challenge. We're going to get there. You know, we're going to get there for her. With son Reese along for the ride, Helen's taking her new exercise regime seriously. Breathe. So I'm going down and to get my heart rate back down. Lee has challenged Helen to lose 20 kilos in the first 40 days, a little over 10% of her body weight. But two weeks in, Helen's found an excuse to overload her plate with food again, while her body battles on in pain. I'm a bit down at the moment. I put my back out last weekend and uh, I couldn't do any training during the week because of fear of putting it or making it worse. I've got this shoulder pain. I want to do more, but I can't. I can only do what I can do. Helen has to control her addiction and the place to start is in her own kitchen. So what we've got here is you've told me about you loved fast food and that was one of your sort of problem areas before. I guess it's not, it, I mean, we liked it. 
the taste of fast food, but it was yeah. also the time involved in preparing. Yeah, it, it was yeah. quicker to grab takeaway food. Sure, okay. And you've got a son who clearly likes this kind of food too. So getting him involved in helping this, and what I want to show you is how easy it is to make homemade burgers. He's a growing lad, so I understand that sort of urgency for I want my food now, mum. And that's the sort of thing that she's struggling with. And I really feel strongly that part of that story is one, being prepared, but two, having the skills to know how can I create a really quick meal and get it on the table fast. Now you don't want to make them too thick or they take forever to cook in the barbecue and they don't cook in the middle. And because we've kind of lost some of those basic cooking skills, it makes it really, really hard. And it's easy to fall into that trap of thinking, oh, it's much easier just to get takeaway on the way home. Kangaroo meat, I mean, you can see the color difference there. Kangaroo meat is really rich in protein and it's really high in iron and it's incredibly lean. I need to probably just get Reese involved in the cooking and get him to try the new flavors, you know, kangaroo meat and stuff like that. I don't want to have to cook three different meals. And, you know, Reese, without even trying it, he says, no, I don't like it. But our nutritionist thinks that not telling Reese what he's actually eating may change things. Is that good? That's kangaroo. OK, that's a good sign. You're looking happy. I'm very pleased by that. You know what? You can get a healthy meal on the table in under 15, 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be hard. It does have to be tasty and nutritious, though. And, you know, that will start knocking on her, because the other thing I'm concerned about is her son. A month has passed since Helen began her do-or-die quest to lose weight. It's a daily battle. I think the hardest thing, obviously, for you, Helen, is your time restraints. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a working mum, and the biggest thing you want to do is spend time with, with Reese and with Phil. Yeah. Uh, that's the most important part of your life. And, of course, you, you know. Do you feel that like you sort of get left behind in this a bit? You don't... I probably have. I, like, I've put myself behind. Yeah. Caring about others. You know, are you doing this for you? Are you doing it for Reese? Um... My main motivation is Reese, so that he has me around. I mean, he's turning 10 in a couple of months, and I guess when he was younger, I probably thought that I wouldn't see him turn 10. God, it must make you feel horrible. Yeah. But he's there, and I'm still here, and I'm going to change that, so I'm here for his 21st. Dude, so, it'll happen. It's the day of Helen's first weigh-in. Lee wanted her to lose 20 kilos in her first 40 days. But Helen knows she hasn't always kept on track, so she's made her own goal much lower. You know, stepping on the scales, please at least be the nine kilos that I'm hoping for. Come on, Helen, it's time to be weighed. Yep. It's been 40 days. How do you feel? Good. Good? What are you expecting? I'm hoping for nine or ten kilos. Step up. Forty days. You've had some injuries, been sick. There's been some challenges as well along the way. Yep. Okay. What are you expecting? Between nine and ten kilos. That's what you hope for? Yeah. Well. Step up. The last time super obese mum Helen Clark tried to weigh in, she was too big for the scales. 40 days, you've had some injuries, been sick, there's been some challenges as well along the way. Yep. Okay, what are you expecting? Between nine and 10 kilos. That's what you hope for? Helen started this journey at 189 kilos and a goal of 50 kilos in nine months. Woohoo! It's 9.6. Well done. Congratulations. 40 days, 9.6. Yeah? Good. You happy with that? Very happy. The way in for Helen was disappointing for me. I think, to be honest, with it, Helen was happy and that wasn't enough for me. I would have been more happy with 15, you know, but you've had those injuries, you've been sick, mm -hmm. understand that. It sort of picked me up but threw me down. 9.6 is good, 
but you could have done better sort of thing. There's a long way to go. Our next one, you know, we really have to go hard. We really have to focus on you. Mm -hmm. We have to start getting personal with yourself and understanding yourself and you again, yeah? Mm -hmm. For Helen, it's about self-awareness of the body, functionality of the body, making it move again, making herself understand that she can do things. You know, once she understands that, then we can take the next step forward and recreate, you know, this uh, emotional boundary that we're pushing back against all the time. You know, her and I are, uh, you know, fighting emotionally with each other because one wants something else and the other one wants something else. So we're, it's a battle. This is the last time Helen will see Lee for a month. After today, she's on her own. Our goal now is to exercise for an hour straight. Yeah? Yep. Okay, pick it up, pick it up, keep your hands nice and high. No, no, keep your hands punching. I love the boxing. I guess it gives me a chance to give out some frustration and stuff as well, so. But it, it's, it's pretty cool. Up high, up high, up high, up high. The elbows get them down nice and tight. That's it, and reach and punch. Good, 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 good punching. She needs to get this baggage, this emotional baggage, out of her system and take a next step forward and start working hard on herself because her health and her body shape will change. One, two, and box step up. One, two, change again. That's one. Five, six, seven. Ten, three. Come on, all good. And breathe out and turn around. So, how do you think you went? Pretty good. Pretty good? I'd say pretty amazing, unbelievable. From day one to today, you should be very proud of yourself. That's a great, great job, well done. The intensity now just picks up. Yeah. You know, the honeymoon's over. This is now where the real start, real work starts. Mm -hmm. This is where the real time begins. Here's the surprising fact. Helen killed the workout. Killed it. You know, she could exercise for another 30, 40 minutes. And this is the bit about control. I had control of the workout. I think I do understand her and understand her pretty well. You let her control anything, it's a failure. You know, you finish work at 4.30, 5 o'clock. You get home, your son has sport, so we're off to sport. There's the lunches to be made, the washing that still needs to be doing, there's the housework that still needs to be done. There's always time, though, for the most important person in Helen's life. We have a sign, Jancy. Oh. Not only really that, we've got a sign. And a sign for football. Yeah, from oh. everyone on the team. Oh. Oh, How cool is that? There was nights that I would just look at him and think, am I going to be here? for his 10th birthday, so. So how, how, how are you feeling within yourself? I'm feeling good. Um, Still confident? For most parts. Mm, I'm confident, you know, that I'm doing the right things. Um, I guess I felt a big change initially, like in the first five or so weeks, I, I felt that I'd, you know, lost a bit. And, you know, just in the last few weeks, I haven't felt like I've lost a huge amount it just right. doesn't seem like it's changing yeah but you know I mean I'm sure it is but it's just for me I don't feel like I am Helen's been training on her own for 30 days but Lee thinks she's still too vulnerable to giving up so he's organized a surprise boot camp I'm packing to go to Sydney for a week for some intense Helen time so they tell me I think I've come to a, a lull point um, more of a you know just pittering along and need to boost it up. There has to be an intervention with Helen. There has to be time spent with her. And hopefully we will become closer and become good friends through this whole process. I went to the airport to pick Helen up to show her that I was here for the week for her and going to support her from the moment she stepped off the plane to the moment she gets back on the plane. Seeing Lee standing there, I guess, it was like, here goes. My life is over. <laughs> and Lee's wasting no time. Check in, 10 minutes. Back down for our first workout. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Good work. We're going to go for a little stroll now. Yeah. Get comfortable with the surroundings and settings. I took Helen on the walk because she needs to enjoy me being around her and take the most she can from me, learn everything she can, take hold of what I'm giving her, the tools, the information, the knowledge, the inspiration. But one thing I want you to do this week is give me 100% effort. 
in everything and honesty. If you're pissed off, you're pissed off. If you're happy, you're happy. If you're sad, you're sad. If you can't do it, if you're hurt, let me know so we can start to get this whole process right, yeah? I have to take her through this journey. So what she's feeling and what she's doing, I'm experiencing them too. Can you do that for me? Can you? It needs to be more than just a yeah, yeah, because a yeah, yeah doesn't buy it for me anymore. I need to know that we're doing it together. I do know that that's not his job, is to be my friend. I know his job is to push me and get whatever he can out of me. We're going to be together for the next six months or more. So we've got a long road to go to, through. And being arch enemies is not going to make the road any easier. I feel as though that you've already built these expectations around what, what's going to be fun, what isn't going to be fun. I'm only communicating with you. I just want to know where your head is with it all. So I can then start to develop a plan going forward for both of us. So I don't have to feel threatened by you. Why do you feel threatened by me? Because you? I don't think that you think that we are here to help. I think you think we're the obstacle. In actual fact, we're trying not to be the obstacle. We're trying to be the people to help you. It's about changing her life. And that's why I care so much about it. Because here's a woman who has one opportunity left to change her life, and it's now. And if she doesn't, she won't live to see her son Reese's 21st birthday. She's on a road to nowhere. I don't want us to fail. I don't plan on failing. If I can't help her, I've failed. That's why I'm vulnerable, because unless she helps me help her, we're at a dead end. Trainer Lee Campbell has brought Helen to Sydney to focus solely on her goal of changing her habits and stopping eating herself to death. So Helen's going to weigh you in at the start of the week and weigh you in at the end of the week to see what changes we've made. Step onto the scales. At the last weigh-in, Helen tipped the scales at 179 kilos. What weight are you expecting to be, if anything? 175. 174.3. Start of the week. 174.3. Let's get into 170 by the end of the week. Good me. Sounds great to me. Lee believes Helen has to tackle her inner demons before she makes real progress. Push those legs. Helen's scared of being in the public because of her size. She's scared to walk to school with Reese because that may embarrass him. Getting out there and walking up and down and being part of the community that she so wants to be part of, Good. nothing better. Good. Good work, heart rate. Breathe for me. Keep going to the corner, we're going to jog to the tree. Good work. Keep going, keep going. End of that session, she runs down the hill to the car. Good work, Helen. Come on, she's ready. I'm happy with that, you've got to be happy with that. <laughs> I guess I think that was probably our first sort of bonding bit there. You know, him helping me up the stairs and making sure I wasn't going to fall and all that sort of stuff, so... There's your brekkie. Enjoy. Great session. <laughs> <laughs> it was bloody hard, I'll tell you now, but it was... It was worth it. It was worth doing. Punch me. Anywhere. I think that Helen's past the crime, she passed, she's past the failure. She now is full of life and ready to go. Helen's lost 15 kgs in just over two months. Her goal is 50 kgs in nine months. She needs to get to a point where her weight no longer endangers her life. The pool was a lot of fun and I, and I really enjoy the aqua. You know, it's a different type of workout. Things that I can't do out of water, I can do in water. <laughs> we did a lot of exercises trying to um, build up my lung capacity, but um, unfortunately I'm a bit buoyancy and I've floated a lot, so <laughs> Lee had to keep pushing me down. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, we had a lot of fun in there. Um, I think that was probably a big bonding session for us in the pool. Let's do some more tea bags. <laughs> Then we'll do some jump in, jump outs. I'm not jumping in, 
<laughs> you can jump in and out. Well, I think it's unfair. One has to do it, the other has to do it. I don't need to prove my masculinity. <laughs> my manhood's there. Just packed away very tightly at the moment. <laughs> How good is it she's changed the whole attitude to everything? It's all right, I got to see them before he actually got in and they weren't much different. <laughs> She's 150% behind everything we're suggesting and doing, so it's just a remarkable turnaround. From a miserable, downtrodden, I'm overweight person to I'm going to change my whole world. It's unbelievable. Step by step, Lee is gaining Helen's trust and breaking down the walls she's hidden behind for years. Rain, hail or shine, Helen needs to understand that she can train. And there's no excuses. She finds it very difficult to find time during the day. She's a poor time manager, you would say, because there's excuses not to exercise. Um, or it's wet outside, or I don't want to get my shoes dirty. Straight into it, you're going to jog to catch me. Yep. Okay. I probably had to believe in her as well. Really believe in her. I had to believe that she could do this. I mean, you can push anyone to do anything, but I had to personally get over the fear or doubt that she was just going to fail and fail miserably, and that was making me fail. That's it, that's it, good work, good work. So we both had to cross that path, we both had to go on the journey of letting each other know that we will do this for each other. Your motivation changed from when we started, or is it the same? It's still Reese, um, and but me as well, so it's, it's more of like my journey now. I mean, I'm doing it for Reese as well, but to be, live longer with him, but um, you know, he can't make me do it. Mm. It's me that's got to make myself do it. So, you know, and if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it for me, no. so... Listen, I've chosen you for this, and what you're doing today proves to me that you want to achieve this and do this. So, this one, as fast as you want, this is for Reese. He wouldn't have made me do it if he didn't believe that I could do it. So, um... So it was good, you know, somebody else believed in me as well. Believed in everything that I've been doing. This is for the future. Come on. And someone's got my back. It was a realisation for me that I, I can do more than I think I can. I guess it was to prove to myself too that I could do it. All the way. Not to prove to anybody else, but to myself that I can do this. And I can and I will. So, Helen, great week, Thanks. inspiring week. You've done an amazing job, very proud of you. It's been great working with you this week. I've got one more challenge for you though. Radio. You're going to cook? Yes, it involves a barbecue. Yes, barbecue. Cook a health meal for six people. Right. Got to go to Woolies, back in one hour, cooked and done. Okay. You up for it? I'm up for it. Let's go. Let's go. I'll have the reduced fat feta. Yeah. About um, two thirds, yeah. For me, it's, I guess, making a variance now on the food instead of just having the one portion, like the steak for my protein and then the sweet potato for my carb and some veggies. Let's let's dress it up a bit more now. Hey, can I get some um, chicken breast steak? Something different from just the steak and three veg. $21.05. It's been a pretty full on week. There's been some really good times, but for the most part, I guess, for me, it's been hard hard going. I've been pretty stuffed every night. <laughs> Look at that, chicken's cooked beautifully. This week was a, a, a turning point. <laughs> I'm determined that I'm going to put extra time in to exercising. There you go. Bon appetit. Right. And the staff? Come on out. I'm going home to buy a bike. When I get off that plane, we're actually going to a bike shop and I'm going to go and buy a bike. And we're going to go bike riding as a family. Cheers to you, Helen. Here's to a great week, great learning, a great change in attitude and life. Realisation of that, to get out what I want to achieve, I need to put in. 
onwards and upwards from here. Well done, Helen. Well done. Thank well done. you. You did a really Excellent. great job. Five days into Helen's time in Sydney, she's about to find out if all her hard work will be reflected on the scales. OK, Helen, moment of truth. Great week training. What are you going to be happy with? I'll be happy with three, but I'd really love to see 4.3 to get okay. me to 170. Regardless of what you've lost, you've had an amazing week. You've changed from being threatening to being a mate. And For you. enjoying <laughs> what we do together. So, are you ready? OK, Helen, step up. Start of the week, 174.3 today. OK, Helen, step up. OK. Start of the week, 174.3 today. One seventy two point three. But this week's been more about the mindset and the shift in attitude and the whole purpose behind this. And you know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, here for another week, we'd knock another five off. I think it's a great result. In five days, two kilos, fantastic. Thanks. Helen's on the road to success. We've got challenges to go through. We've got a lifestyle we've got to go back to. We've got things that are always going to knock on the door to say, here, here's another reason or excuse. But I believe that we've formed a relationship that can get on and move around past that and find results. So yes, I believe she will achieve this. It's been four months since Helen last saw Lee in Sydney. She's lost nearly 40 kilos, bought that bike, really go slow. and her home life with 10-year-old Reese and partner Phil has never been better. But she's frustrated her weight loss has come to a standstill sort of plateaued in the last month or so. I was losing and gaining, like I was losing 600 um, grams and gaining 800 grams and then losing a kilo and then gaining 600 grams. So it was sort of, each week was just up and down, which I guess is the normal life. If I was wanting to maintain, that would be perfect. But uh, for me that wants to keep losing, it's not perfect. Lee believes the answer may be more intensive therapy at the New You Weight Loss Clinic. Mentally, I've got Helen there, but she's still frustrated. She needs to know her results straight away, how she's doing and what she's doing right or wrong. She needs to be around people who can support her the whole time and give her the confidence that she's achieving her goals. Without the stress of everyday life, for once, Helen can focus on Helen. It was a nice change to have me time. You know, it's just been me to think about. I haven't had that since Reese was born, so. You know, it's been always him and I. I give my time to other people, um, and whether it's a lot of time or not, you know, I'm still doing things for them, or, you know, if somebody asks me to do something, it's never too much trouble for me to do it. And I guess that sort of puts me into, a, into the fact that, you know, that I'm taking less time for me and doing more things for other people, whether it be my son or my friends or family or work. Helen's been at the obesity clinic for almost a month. She doesn't know how much weight she's lost, but her focus isn't just on the scales. My time at New U has been, I guess, challenging, rewarding. It reminded me that, you know, that I'm, I'm doing this not only for Reese but for myself. You know, I've met some really nice people and some people that I'm going to keep in contact with and people that I know are also on the journey to lose weight, so, um, you know, that will be, if anything, you know, to take away those friendships of people that are doing the same journey and wanting to achieve the same goals. Um, being able to inspire each other will probably be, you know, a good thing. Is probably the best thing to have taken away from here. Hi, Helen. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, thank you. Well, last and final Wayne today here at New Year. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. When you came to New U, you were at 150.5 kilos. Did mm -hmm. you have a particular goal in mind? Oh, look, I was hoping to sort of get to the 130s, you know, 138 probably would. But um, in realistic terms, I don't think that that's probably going to be possible. Um, mm -hmm. So, But I'm sure that I've made good progress to get yep. there. 
you've had, made excellent progress. So we'll jump on the scales and see what the numbers say. When Helen arrived here a month ago, she'd lost 40 kilos. Can she make her goal of 50? It's 230 days since Helen Clark began the quest to save her life. You're a time bomb just waiting to go off. Walking death. She started her journey at a super obese 189 kilos and needing to lose 50 kilos just to lessen the risk of dying. Helen lost weight, but only slowly. 9.6. I would have been more happy with 15. You could have done better sort of thing. And then lost all motivation. A year, year doesn't buy it for me anymore. I need to know that we're doing it together. Here's a woman who has one opportunity left to change her life, and it's now. But for the sake of her 10-year-old son, Helen wouldn't give up. I can do this, and I will. Even when she hit a wall. If I was wanting to maintain, that would be perfect. But uh, for me that wants to keep losing, it's not perfect. But with strict supervision, Helen finally began to beat her food addiction. Now, has four weeks at the obesity clinic given Helen the boost she so desperately needs? OK, that's 143.3 kilos, so that brings you up to another 7.2 kilos in total that's in good. four weeks. I'm happy with Excellent. that. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> so proud. Like, I was nearly near 200 kilos, so... Um... It's, it's a huge amount of weight to have lost. <laughs> well done. You've done awesome. Thanks. Excellent. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of what I've been able to achieve. Um, you know, and, you know, life can only get better from here. In the nine months since Helen started, she's been on one hell of a journey. Like, I had my own expectations, but for me it's been hard, hard going. She lost 46 kilos, even when pushed to breaking point. I don't think that you think that we are here to help. I think you think we're the obstacle. I guess the most important thing that I've learnt while doing this for the whole year is that um, dieting is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. And achieving small goals and tiny steps to the one big giant leap. If you had any advice for anyone sort of sitting in the same position you've been and you've, you've sort of come away and you've got obviously a way to go, what would that advice be? Just go each day as each day. Like if you're bad for one day, don't like make that bad that day affect the rest of your week. You know, just get back on the wagon the next day, you know, and, and take each day as each day. So, you know, it's a slow process. It's not, not going to happen overnight. Are you sort of seeing, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, perhaps? Yeah. I, I just sort of know, like, within myself, I'm not going back there. I'm not going to go backwards. So it's just full steam ahead from here. Which leaves just one more challenge for the woman who's no longer too big to join her son on a theme park ride. The people that love me, um, I don't think they're proud of me. I know they are. This is life from now on. And that's how life is meant to be. I'm not going to be that sideline mom anymore. I'm going to be the one out there doing the stuff with him as well. You know what, once I'm out there, I don't think you're going to hold me back. No. You're an absolute inspiration, I've got to tell you. It's, it's, it's really something to, to see. Thanks. Tonight, we meet Michael. You know, every day you get out of bed, you lean over, you stand up. I mean, it's like weightlifting. Every time you get up and down, every time you walk up and down stairs. For as long as he can remember, he's been different. Different from other kids. Different from other grown-ups. Different because he is super obese. Welcome to McDonald's. What would you like? Yeah, can I get a sausage and egg uh, muffin meal with a medium Coke? And another sausage and egg muffin, thanks. But how Michael became this fat is no mystery. He's simply eating himself to death. You know, those sort of habits over many years becomes your way of life. But it's convenient and, um, you know, you get lazy, I guess. You get lazy. Michael's always been a comfort eater, 
despite a childhood of humiliation and shame. I was always picked on and tormented at school because of my weight. One of the boys in our class died and this PE teacher was highlighting to everyone that the next bunch of flowers we'd be sending would be to my grave because I was so fat and I was overweight. You know, and that just drove the rest of them that from then on, you know, why don't you do something? Why, you know, you, you, you're fat, you're stupid. And today, even the easiest of tasks have become almost unbearable. Some of the problems that uh, confront me in the workplace, you know, meeting rooms and chairs, Chairs are a big problem for obese people. Michael's answer is always to hide behind this jolly smile, a smile that hides the pain of what his weight has cost him. When my wife left, she left me a note. I didn't tell anyone, didn't, didn't ring anybody, and that was probably the worst day of my life. Where do you see yourself going? I want to be able to have children. I want to be able to go over and kick the football across the road and not be tired and sweaty. And I don't want them to miss out on opportunities because of my weight. Michael dreams of becoming a dad, a feeling like the man he wants to be. This is a man desperate for help and is about to get it. In the next hour, we'll put him through 300 days of incredible physical... We're going to run. ..and mental pain. This is the story of a man's dream come true. The transformation of a food addict who was simply too big. Uh, normally a 13. It's six years since Michael's wife walked out on him. But that hasn't stopped him finding a new love and a ready-made family that seems like a perfect fit. It was almost like he was a man without a family and we were a family without a man and a kind of like that. Michael's life now evolves around Hannah and her two sons. But then there's this. I have a new family. I've got responsibilities in that. And being the weight I am, I'm not going to live a long life like this. And that's the honest truth. I mean, the doctors tell you, they keep telling you, you know it. But I've got to do something. If Michael's unable to lose the weight, what do you fear about that? That one day he just won't be here. Hannah knows how it feels to be fat. Last year, she had a stomach stapling operation. She's since lost 45 kilos and found love. Everyone likes Michael. He's become this benchmark and every time he does something quite nice for me and my friends might go, my partner hasn't done that. It makes you feel special, makes you feel like a princess. But Hannah has given Michael an ultimatum. Lose the weight or we'll never have children together. Because I would like to have another child and whatnot, and I don't want to be doing raising that child alone. So how will it make you feel if he does put a little bit more back on? If he starts to regain, then I'm pushing that he does go and have the surgery. Right now, Michael is way too obese to qualify for a sleeve gastrectomy. He doesn't even know what he weighs. But he's about to find out with some tough love from this man. I don't know how the guy's alive. He's a massive man. He's got this massive guts, just this huge overhang. Good to meet you. I'm here to change your life and give your life back to you. Thank you. I'm going to weigh you first and go from there. OK, step on. Yep. Nice and easy. Michael has no idea what these supersized scales will come back with. That's not good. That's the truth. There's no hiding from that. No hiding from that. Over 235 kilos. Prones you more to illness, cancers, all of the above. 235 kilos is a lot of weight. Yeah, it is. It just makes it hard, you know? Like, I'm, I'm really unhappy with myself physically. Yep, can't hide the truth. That's right. Off we get. I know somewhere under here there's, there is some muscle and there is some strength hidden away inside this body, you know? It's, uh, it's just that you know, I need to keep the strength parts but then lose 
lose the, lose the, the physical person that I am today. Give me one goal in the next month, a goal. Something unreachable, a goal that we can do. Look, I've got the oval across the road from where I live, okay. right? So I, I, to, for, for a goal for myself would be to go two laps of that oval. Without stopping? Without stopping. Right, two laps. <laughs> Over the next 40 days, Lee wants Michael to lose at least 20 kilos. Ten. This is a man who can barely walk 400 metres, but in just a few months, we'll need to cover 14 kilometres. We're going to run as part of a remarkable transformation to make a dream come true. OK, step on. Yep. Nice and easy. 42-year-old Michael Geraghty's first step on the scales in years has come as a shock. Over 235 kilos. That's not good. That's the truth. There's no hiding from that. No hiding from that. I'm not going to live a long life like this. I've got myself to where I am today. I know better than, than doing what I do, but I just can't drive myself to control it. He's massive. He's got this massive guts, just this huge overhang. Michael's been down this road before. Six years ago, he lost 75 kilos, but then heartbreak. His wife left him for another woman. His life fell apart, and he began to eat himself to death. When a marriage breaks up and it's because someone's gay or lesbian and you're not, it trumps all. The key to the relationship and the attraction is just not there. My relationship that I'd had and, and trusted was, you know, was gone. And you put on this, this persona that, you know, you are happy all the time and that there's, there's nothing really going wrong in your life. You just keep the, you keep the act going, I guess. So you said, you know, you've, you're to blame for this. Why? What's gone on in your head to do this? I think I ate my way out of what was probably a depression. My fear is that once I, if I lose the weight, if I diet, I put the effort in, I lose the weight, my fear is going back. I now know that I need surgery to assist me long term. I disagree. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> you've already lost 75 kilos before. Yeah. Without any help at all. Why, why, why wouldn't we try to give our body the best opportunity not to have surgery? wake up to yourself, get healthy, lose weight, and do it the natural way. I mean, you don't need, just because you get big, to blame something else or someone else to go away and have a surgery to fix the problem. I do stand to be corrected. So if someone can show me the way without it, I'm happy to accept that as well. Today, Michael's habits must change. And that starts at home with his new partner, Hannah, and his very determined trainer. OK, guys, so garbage bag moment truth. <laughs> One of the things that we're going to do as parents is concentrate on changing not just your behavioural pattern for food, the kids. Chocolate flavoured dipping. Chocolate bars. Poppers for the kids. I don't love those. Sugar. <laughs> Mayonnaise. Oh, it's it. like that, though. Yeah, <laughs> heaps of added sugar. You're not going to get rid of their chocolate. Jesus. Pro they're protein. They're protein. 1000-old <laughs> dressing. Again, killing me. Killing the kids. This is un... This is unbelievable. <laughs> that is... Uh -oh. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm feeling a little confronted. A bit more so as my role as mother and what I've been letting my kids eat and get away with. To me, if they're happy and they're fed, then that shows that they're loved. You know, I felt really sorry for, you know, Hannah who had done part of the shopping, but I mean, I'm, it's not Hannah's fault. I mean, I'm part of this. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. It's very hard to, to face that, the realism of that, you know, to have someone go through the you know, what you buy, what you eat, the cupboards, the fridge. That, that complacency is death. Mm -hmm. This is a serious matter. I mean, those kids walking around snacking. I haven't even... They were treat. Everything in your life is a treat. <laughs> Living should be a treat, not killing yourself. And that's what you're doing. Outside ready to go? Yes. Well, your goal yesterday was walk around the oval twice. Yep. So today, we're going to see how far we can go. OK. Michael's super-obese body 
has to be carefully monitored. Push too hard and there's a risk of cardiac arrest. Look at your heart rate. I'm 44. 44. So I'm going to walk slow again. So the average walking speed is about 5.5 k's an hour. OK. Yeah? We're walking at about 2.3 now. OK. It was a very light workout, but it's a start. Really simple, just walking. 130, 140. 140. <laughs> Back it off a little bit. Yeah, 143. I didn't overexert myself. Um, you know, my heart rate went up to, you know, over 140. Uh, and it, look, it's great having this to be able to, to tell myself when to pull back. So we've walked maybe 200 metres. Yep. 200 metres. And you're shaking a little bit and it's still above, the, it's around the 130. Yep. So, you know. Tells the story. Tells you the story <laughs> of how your body's coping. Yeah. But mentally you're strong. Yeah. This isn't about just weight loss, this is about lifestyle change, this is about getting your family right, this is about everything that he wants and it's about building his life back together for him. So I think he's in the right place, he's strong. Michael has a long, lonely path ahead, but he's showing early promise. The alarm went off at five o'clock this morning. This, this is part of the new routine um, to try and fit the training in during a busy day. His work colleagues are joining in his daily walks as Michael tries to lose 20 kgs in the first 40 days. To most of us, 20 kilos is a lot of weight. But on a man Michael's size, it should be at least the easiest 20 kilos of this journey, which to Michael is one of love for Hannah and her kids. His chances of success if he stays the way he is in his um, attitude are 100%, so that's exciting for me. But it's going to take more than just exercise to shrink this giant man. He needs to deal with what he's putting in his mouth. The best thing about the way the supermarket's laid out is that you always walk into the fruit and veggie section first, OK? okay. All of the good stuff, almost all of the good stuff in the supermarket is on the outside. Do you like grapes? I do. I've always thought the grapes were a high in sugar type thing and not to have them. In fact, these sugars are very slowly absorbed. They're just used as any other carbohydrate in your body, so these are great. I want to encourage Michael to think about the fats in food and show him that you can enjoy some really good fats in your diet. Do you use nuts? Um, I do. Yeah, I do like nuts. <laughs> yeah, all the right kinds of fat. We've got lots of studies showing you include a handful of nuts every day and it helps with weight loss. These are really filling. You know, going back to what can you eat in the car when you've got a long drive ahead of you, having some fresh fruits, some nuts and some seeds are ideal snacks for that kind of situation, OK? I like to plan where I'm going to be, what I'm going to have, um, so that I don't, I'm not tempted by foods that I shouldn't have. And as I'm going along the journey, I'm finding what else I can have. And it's being able to pick the right options. It's been a month since Michael began his new lifestyle and what he is and isn't allowed to eat is affecting his entire family. How's the diet regime going at home? Oh, good. Yeah? Good. Um, coming up with ideas for dinners that are going to satisfy everybody is probably the greatest challenge, but that's been the challenge even before the diet. OK. Yeah, look, it's funny. Like, I don't need it to be fancy or anything else. I don't live for food. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a fat person, that may seem funny. But, yeah, I don't. I yeah. just sort of I've got very basic taste and... You, don't, you didn't even eat dessert when we first met. No. Yeah. I, um, I introduced him to... I could on you. Dessert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Friend or foe. Yeah, that's right. And now we don't have a choice. Lee <laughs> took everything good. <laughs> no, Lee took everything bad. Yeah. <laughs> I've been brainwashed already. I've got to tell you, you've got to jump on board a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling there's a little resistance here. So. Trainer Lee Campbell wanted this 235 kilo man to lose 20 kilos in the first 40 days. Today, Michael will find out if he's done enough to hit that target. The anticipation of waiting for the weigh-in day was getting bigger and bigger as the days went on, I guess. It's a bit of an unknown, you know, you want to make sure you've been doing the right thing. Michael, it's time to be weighed. It's been 40 days. How do you think you're going to go? I've gone well. The diet's held strong and the exercise was good in the initial stages of, you know, the, the, the diet. So hopefully it uh, would have held out. Step up on the scales.
240 days ago, you were 235.7. What are you expecting for? Oh, I'm hoping for over 20. Today, you are... Michael, step up on the scales. Forty days ago, you were 235.7. What are you expecting for? Well, I'm hoping for over 20. Today, you are... Two hundred and ten. Wow! <laughs> well done. Well, that's excellent. Congratulations. Well done, mate. Well done. That's excellent. Well done. Twenty-five <laughs> kilos. Yeah. Great work. The shrinking man. Twenty-five kilos later. I mean, fantastic. He has done an amazing job today. A lot more work to do, though. A lot of hard work to do. The next way, and we want to be fifty kilos lighter from day one. Fantastic. Yep. Now all the hard work starts. Now we can really get going forward. We're getting healthier, stronger. Now, no. No excuses at all. 25 is fantastic. Next time we're going to go for 30. But behind Michael's happy face is more Should fear. Go. He's been here before. He's lost weight before. But will this time be different? How do you see it playing out in the future if something goes a bit awry? It's my biggest fear. It's losing the weight and then something else happening that will then bring it back again. Because I wasn't able to stop it. And I swore when I'd lost that other weight that I wouldn't put one, one of those kilos back. And I. And I did, you know, and I, I wasn't able to control it. Great work. No wonder there's a lot more room in the shirts. <laughs> no wonder your pants are falling off you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not because Hannah's chasing you around. <laughs> He's uh, ready to go to the next level and increase his workout rate, his effort rate. Where he needs to go now is really pick up the workout and uh, get things going. We're going to run. Wow. <laughs> True. Okay. Legs feeling good? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Shuffle. Okay, walk. Heart rate. On 30, 39. Perfect. His goal 40 days ago, he couldn't even walk around the oval. Today, it was just too easy. He's way past that. So instead of chipping away at that goal, we made him run some lengths of the oval, and uh, that was fantastic. So. The guy now 25 kilos lighter and moving a whole lot better and his body, he can actually run now, so it's, fan it's amazing. So this test was easy, the next one's going to be a little bit difficult. <laughs> the hard work needs to be done now because you've got over the first bit, yep. easy, you saw how easily you accomplished it. Now all that focus is on our next goal. Yep, congratulations mate, well done, Thanks. good job. Michael's one of those guys that won't give up easily. He's a self-determined person, so he's just going to keep chipping away and go full steam ahead now. Can I ask you what, what it is that has brought you to this very point where you've decided to change your life? Hannah and the boys is the, is the big driver. You know, this new family, this new love in my life. I've got responsibilities in that. You know, and being the weight I am and being the person that I am is just... I'm not going to live a long life like this, and that's the honest truth. I mean, the doctors tell you, they keep telling you, you know it, but I've got to do something. Right. Eventually, Michael has to go it alone. Lee will be leaving him for a month. And Michael is coming to understand just how lonely this journey really is. We started great guns. Great guns. The, the first 40 days was, was a good loss, sticking to the program really well. Um, the exercise was going really well. And then all of a sudden it stopped. You know, there was some travel with work and, and little things that came along. I've got myself now with a stress fracture in my foot. I got myself a bout of the flu as well. That's just another disappointment along the road now of, of now I've had to step back. I can't do the little bits of jogging that I was doing when I'm training. There are things now I can't do that created some challenges for me. And life at home isn't helping Michael's battle. Hang on, how about I get rid of the Domino's pizza <laughs> so that I can get to my things? Like, it's just... I feel like Lee. That's a lasagna. That's, health. That's a healthy lasagna I made the boys. Good grief, Michael. Michael arrives at his second weigh-in 
fearful of facing up to Lee. Nearly three months in, he should be under 200 kilos. MG, step on the scale. We weighed at your house, 210. Yeah. Today you're 212.1. Well, we've put weight on then, 2.1 kilos. Good luck. You know, I thought I would have been further along than I am. And it's a mixture of things, you know, it's, it's workload. You know, I, I live my life driving around in a car. <laughs> One thing I'm going to do, keep a closer eye on you. And so when you are sick, we can still monitor how you're feeling, what else is going. Personalised training, armband. This will be on you 24-7. It'll tell me everything you're not doing and everything you are doing. So there are no, no more excuses. This is the first and last second chance. And you need to get emotionally involved in everything now and just really put everything in because we need to half your body weight yep. for you to succeed at what we need to do. And you know that. Feeling very disappointed about Michael. I think he has not achieved what he needs to achieve. He's let himself down but also let me down. I'm finding more and more excuses and not putting in the work that he needs to do. Right, mate, in we go. Oh, this is the fun part. Throw the leg over. <laughs> People don't get this big, Michael doesn't get this big from eating the right size of food and doing the right things. There's been excuses before or there's been reasons. Now he's going back to finding the reasons and excuses. I don't accept that. All right, mate, set up the feet nice and wide and just punch the big ones. Yep. Hands high. Fast. Come on. Go on. Go on. Can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I suck it in. Just gets hard to get the get the breath going all of a sudden. Have you been at home on the treadmill at all? Not this week. No. Yeah. How committed are you to getting what we need to do? How committed? How 100, committed? 100%. 100%? But I just haven't been putting the... You know, I say 100%, but I haven't been putting the real effort in. Yeah. You know, I know I haven't. We fought so hard to get him a treadmill and to get him set up at home. Again, doesn't work on it at all. No work on it. To me, he's not showing the leadership that he needs to show. I'm letting things get in the way, and I'm allowing that to become excuses not to do it. So you can see why I'm disappointed? Yeah, can. All right, let's go. Let's punch again. I want 50. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, Lee's hard, but he's also very supportive as well. Um, you know, there's, there's you know, the good with the bad with you know, a personal trainer like Lee, you know, he's, he's quite professional to work with. Punch hard, get all that out of the closet and jog back hard. Hard excuses out the door. No more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. Look, well, it's stuff that I, I know. You know, it's, it's stuff I need to be told, but it's, it's not news to me. We've got some long training sessions ahead of us. We've got some road to make up. We've got plenty of road to make up. One, two. Got to try harder. Got to make it happen. The responsibility needs to be more than just, yeah, you know, accept it. Now, actions speak louder than words, so let's see what the next week holds. But Michael is secretly looking for an easier option that would literally shrink his bloated body and win Hannah's heart. This isn't just about a diet, this isn't just about exercise, there's more to this that needs to be answered yet, and that's what I've got to really find the answers for. Hey, Guided by trainer Lee Campbell, 235 kilo Michael Geraghty lost an impressive 25 kilos in the first 40 days. Today, you are 210. Wow. <laughs> but when left to his own devices, Michael lost all control. Well, we put weight on then, 2.1 kilos. Good. I'm feeling very disappointed about Michael. I think he has not achieved what he needs to achieve. He's let himself down, but also let me down. I'm finding more and more excuses and not putting in the work that he needs to do. Despite a face that's denying any wrongdoing, the data from Michael's Sensewear armband is telling a different story. He's eating way too many calories. Yeah, I started with great gusto, I guess. I got good results early, but then as time's gone on, it's slowed down, which it always does, but, but that really 
you know, it really gets to you in the head, I guess. I know I'm putting in the effort and I'm not seeing the results that I think I should be seeing. You know, it's making me rethink the surgical options and, you know, what's, what's going to be best. Do you think there's some block there at the moment? Because we started off strong and you'd have to admit you've, you've plateaued and we're not sort of going anywhere yeah. at the moment. You know, when I look at the scales, the sc you know, you try hard with the diet, you, you're working still hard with the exercise and the, sc the scale just doesn't give it to you. It doesn't make any sense. Though. It doesn't, but I think I'm in the mindset at the moment where I think now the surgery is still the valid option to assist me as part of that exercise diet. So that's what you're contemplating now? You're basically saying, I can't do this by myself? Mm. Is, that, is that where you're at? Look, I, I think so. It just seems so simple. You get off, off of the couch and you exercise and it should work. But it, it just doesn't fit, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. Fearing his massive weight will kill him, Hannah has told Michael she doesn't want a child she'll have to bring up alone. So he's decided to get a sleeve gastrectomy, which will remove two thirds of his stomach and cut down its capacity for food. He also needs to finally convince Hannah that he's doing all this for their future. A future that can only be together. And that means making it official. This year's been a long journey. I made that decision to do something, you know, with me and Hannah and, and to, to make us a family. I would like to have more children and he'd be a good dad. He's been a good dad to the two boys that I already have. I don't know, I don't have any bling on my finger yet. <laughs> so, uh, if he's the one, well, he's going to have to, how does that song go, put a ring on it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's really nice. I like the look of that. Michael's hatched a plan that will further change his life. He's been secretly organising the moment that Hannah has been waiting for. Uh, well, I've booked a cruise. We're off uh, on a cruise to, uh, for a couple of days. So um, it's time to put a ring on it, I guess, as Hannah keeps saying to me. So um, now's the time. The penny started to drop. And I guess once he was on one knee, it was obvious and, yeah. I think she's this princess and, you know, that I want to look after her and make things special, you know, and... Uh, yeah, hey, going down on one knee, I mean, hey, it's a big effort <laughs> for a big unit. You know, you, you have your little fantasies as a girl and that was never really one of mine. I always thought that happened to other girls, not, not to girls like me that are a bit hard to handle. Michael's now proudly engaged. He's taken another step towards being the man he so wants to be. For gastric surgery, Michael needs to weigh under 200 kilos, and that means losing another 12 very quickly. I'm now down to soups, and I've got the low, the low jewel jellies as well, which Hannah's made up for me. Let's talk about the operation. What's the, the reason you want to do it, and then where's the fear around not doing it? The reason I want to do it is because it's one of, I, I think it's one of the healthier options of the weight loss surgery sweet. The sleeve itself is just altering the size, physically altering the size of the stomach and everything else functions the same way. But I'm now restricted as to how much I can eat because the stomach is yeah. considerably smaller. Not losing the weight is not an option for me now. Like I've made my mind up that this is now the time and one way or another it's going to happen. Michael's now lost more than 35 kilos, so he's under the 200 kilo limit for his gastrectomy operation. And today is the big day. Well, he's going in for the surgery and I'm feeling very anxious, hence I'm doing things to keep myself busy. I'm not, um, not coping well at the moment. I had a call last night from the anaesthetist um, giving me a heads up to the things I can expect today and uh, so that sort of caused a little bit more concern. For people my size they have trouble putting the breathing pipe, whatever it is, so they do that prior to, to, to putting you out. 
and also the fact of finding veins and things like that for, um, for the surgery as well is also complicated with obese people. You should ring your mum and tell her what's happening. I have. Oh. A bit nervous, a bit apprehensive about going in. It's my first trip to hospital, first anaesthetic. You know, I knew there was going to be, um, you know, risks with doing it, so. But the risks of not doing it are great too. Stuff have been reassuring, but there's still been this underlying. But at his size, this, this, and this with the anesthesia, and that's got me nervous. I'm concerned, but I'll be confident when he comes out and I say that he's okay and he's awake and nothing's gone wrong. But he did in the car remind me where his life insurance papers were. Just a week ago, Michael Geraghty underwent a drastic operation to reduce his stomach size and help him lose weight. The scars. There they are. The five scars. Bit of bruising around this side, but yeah, nothing's painful. And he puts his speedy recovery down to the fitness he's gained over the past few months. To be able to get up, walk around the ward, do those things. It's things that I normally now do. I get up, walk around. I, you know, where 12 months ago I might have sat on the couch and not been as energetic. I can only see success. Just a month later, this is a man who could not walk 400 metres when we met him six months ago, but who is now taking on his biggest test yet. So, MG, today, your challenge so far, City to Surf, 14 k's, 80,000 people. You ready for it? I oh, certainly am. <laughs> so it's the challenge. Yeah. MG, ready? We're ready, let's go. Look, I'm here today because it was one of the things that I really wanted to do. I've had a few stumbles along the way with injuries and things, but I'm here today and, you know, hopefully I'll get all the way through to the end. Two k's, MG, 12 to go. For MG, everything's led to this point. If you runs the 14 k's, it'll bust the mental block and you'll be able to break through the barrier and achieve a lot more. Five in, MG. Cruising. Cruising all right. Heartbreak hill coming up. Yeah, not long to go. Legs are fine? Yeah, legs are fine. Feeling the foot a little bit. Hey, that's nothing new. The furthest I've done in one session is seven kilometres, so this is double that. You know, and even through this week, I was sort of deciding, do I do it, don't I do it? But I thought, no, I've got to do it, and I've got to try to do it, and I've got to get all the way to the end. MG, start of heartbreak hill. <laughs> Three k's in the top. Shit. <laughs> this is the challenge, mate. This is what we've got to push through. This is what we have to do. <laughs> He's got such a positive attitude right now. Heartbreak Hill coming up. Three k's to the top. It's going to be painful, but he'll get there. Halfway. Easy. All downhill. Hopefully. <laughs> we might run the finish, eh? Hey? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, let's just get there. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if I'd tried to do this three months ago, it just, you know, it wouldn't have happened. But, um, you know, I've come such a long way in such a short amount of time, really. We're here. Zip, zip, zip. Well done, mate. We did it. Congratulations. <laughs> you did it. Thanks. What an incredible achievement. To cover 14 k's today. Hopefully next year, he'll run the 14 k's. Just under three hours. Great challenge. Well, was good result. How do you feel? I feel, I feel good. I, I'm in a bit of pain with my back and my feet, but I feel good, yeah. 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 I think I'm more confident about myself now. My fitness levels, you know, my breathing's a lot better. I can go along for a lot further, you know. I'm really happy with that. Happiness is something Michael is fast discovering. He even has a wedding to look forward to, leaving far behind the bitter memories of his first wife's abandonment and the 75 kilos he put on as a result. You put on this, this persona that, you know, you are happy all the time and that there's, there's nothing really going wrong in your life. 
Today, a much slimmer Michael is having his wedding suit fitted. Gee, how much you lost weight? Gee, my God, what is this? <laughs> what is this? I don't know if these chairs are gonna be able to be fixed. So if you look at how much he lost, might be, can be fixed, might not be fixed. Can be, can you give me a couple of pins from there, please? Check it. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Better make a new, okay? Yeah, Nello. So what's gonna happen here? Make a new, make a new. We probably have to make a new suit because as cutting it from here, all the material go out. As you see, as you see, the pocket coming straight to the half of the chest. Yeah. So this one is you have to give it to Salvation Army. Too much. Okay. I've been too successful. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right, so this is this is one of the ones that I was wearing when we started. So this was one of the 11XL. So you know it's sort of when you look at it now, it's just, you know. It's unwearable, it's like a, it's like a big sheet. <laughs> we could fit in it together. It may not fit, honest. <laughs> Michael's proud of his transformation, but he hasn't been on the scale since his stomach stapling surgery. 10 months ago, he weighed a monstrous 235 kilos. And now, It's 40 weeks since Michael Geraghty was forced to face up to what his super obesity might cost him. I don't know how the guy's alive. He's massive, he's got this massive guts, just this huge overhang. He tipped the scales at 235 kilos. That's not good, that's the truth. And hid the heartbreak of his wife leaving him for another woman by eating and eating. She left me a note. I didn't tell anyone, didn't, didn't ring anybody. And that was probably the worst day of my life. The journey was riddled with irresistible temptations. I'm letting things get in the way. I'm allowing that to become excuses not to do it. So Michael chose a stomach stapling operation to speed up his weight loss program. I knew there was going to be risks with doing it, but the risks of not doing it are great too. And planned a future with his new love, Hannah. You have your little fantasies as a girl and I always thought that happened to other girls, not girls like me that are a bit hard to handle. And the hope of fathering his own child and living to see that child excuses grow up. Out the door. No more excuses. Now Michael's about to find out if the pain, the dieting and the medical intervention has made the difference where it counts. 180.6. So 180.6. Michael has lost 55 kilos. In the 10 months we spent with him, Michael radically changed the way he lives. I'm into the 180s, which is brilliant. You know, I'm really happy with that. You know, we've come along with some steady weight loss. Wow, that's very good. <laughs> Since having the surgery now, I sort of look at the portion sizes that were there, even through the dieting stage of this, this journey. And obviously I was overeating, I was putting calories in my mouth. So there is an element that's been about food, obviously. Even though I say that there wasn't before, my view of that is, is obviously not, not, you know, real. 235 kilos, life was a chore, to be honest. Like, although I, looking back and I say no, no, it didn't stop me doing things and I did, you know, didn't get in the way, but it was all constantly about planning and all yeah, you know, worry about what other people think of you and the way that you look as well. In the 10 months we spent with Michael, he survived a harrowing journey. Well, we did it. This year has been tremendous. Just looking back on it, you know, going through the realities of having to look at myself. It's very confronting to be able to talk about yourself and to do these things. This is the new Michael, and he's still losing weight and proud of it. Excuses. Look, as I've lost weight, I've become more comfortable as well with situations. You know, before people would look at you, point, you know, people with kids would make, the kids would make comments, things like that. You know, I, I don't see any of that anymore. My outlook on food has changed completely. You know, I have no desire to go and have a takeaway meal at all in the evening, and that's incredible. And this day is what Michael's journey 
has been all about. He wanted to be a father, to be a husband, and today that is sealed. When I look back on it, I can't believe what, you know, what, what I've done in the, in, the, in the 12 months. Getting engaged and then getting married and some looking after the family and everything else. I love Michael because he takes care of me and he loves me. He's my schmoopy. <laughs> and it seems Michael may get his ultimate wish, being father to his own child. I've seen that he's a really good dad. I'd be happy to have a little, little, little Michael and uh, add to our family. The only other thing I want to say is that, you know, Hannah, Kellen and Cohen, I love you all very much. Thanks. Now, with nearly 70 kilos lost in just over a year, this family man is finally getting to try the things he loves and get that sense of achievement he's never had. I was able to physically walk up to the top of the Harbour Bridge, which I wouldn't have been able to do at the beginning of this year. So I just had this wonderful sense of achievement, I guess. It's something that I've actually wanted to do and, you know, I actually achieved it. Well done, congratulations, welcome to the summer in the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm here! That's great! I made it! <laughs> a year in the you're in the making, but I'm here. <laughs> you know, no diet ever is easy. You know, like, I'd be, you know, lying if I said it was. You know, we had, you know, going through that and, and doing the exercise. I mean, God, we put in some, so many hours of, you know, physical sweat and exercise sort of to, to get myself to a fitness where I could actually do decent exercise, you know, and to maintain, you know, heart rate, you know, and those sorts of things. So it hasn't, it hasn't been easy, but, I mean, it's all been enjoyable, you know, like, you know, I, don't, I love doing the exercise, I love going and doing the walking, you know, I love going being back and playing golf again and doing those sorts of things and, you know, it's, it's great. Tonight, the season finale. I want to have babies and get married. I know that in the position I'm in that wouldn't happen. This is 22-year-old Bonnie Cools. The bit about me that I really don't like is, is this, this tire thing, this thing. Bonnie stacked on weight in her teens. And from there on, she got bigger and bigger and bigger. I think when I was younger, like 14 or 15, I wasn't as big as I am now, but I was really conscious of, of my weight and I had lots of pressure from people around me to fit in and, and be normal and, and accepted. Now, her obesity makes Bonnie the target of cruel public ridicule. People can't help themselves but make rude comments. And it's hard because, you know, they're, they're comments made, you know, solely on my appearance and they, they don't know me or know anything about me, so it, it's hurtful. What about a boyfriend? Um, yeah, of course I would like a boyfriend, you know. I was engaged at the start of last year, but that ended because, you know, he was a skinny, tall boy and he had beautiful friends who didn't accept me and it was an issue. The influence from his friends and family and the flack he was copying, it took its toll, which sucks, you know. Bonnie is now single but she longs for the love of a special man. There are, however, fears. I'm really scared to have a relationship with someone now because I don't want to get hurt like that again. I don't want to be an embarrassment to someone. I know that they'll never accept me 100% because I'm a big girl. And solely because of that, you know, I don't fit in with how they think I should look. So, you know, I'm different. What Bonnie also longs for is the regular things that regular girls her age do. Like shopping in a regular clothing store. It's very small, extra large. It is very, very small, extra large. So is there a big sense of loss around that for you? Like I'm really missing out? Yeah, there is, there is. And, and I, I, I live with someone who's, who's completely in love with clothes and fashion and shopping. And, and so I think I tend to, to dislike shopping. I, I hate it. It's, it stresses me out to the max. And um, it, it's something I, I don't enjoy. I, you know, because I know this is going to be a disappointment for me. And so I, I just avoid it. 
What's the hardest? What, what, what do you face? I don't like my boobs, I don't like my bum, I hate my belly. I'm super self-conscious now. I look in the mirror and I'm disgusted by what I see. I don't want to be like this, like 100%, I can't live like this because I don't like myself anymore. Now Bonnie's life is about to get a complete overhaul. In the next hour, we'll put her through 300 days of intensive physical and mental training. Get up, get up, get up, you're there. This is the true story of a young woman desperate to lose weight and find love. A woman whose problem right now is simply to be. 22-year-old Bonnie Cools lives in the upmarket suburb of Unley in Adelaide. Her dream is to one day become a fully qualified nurse. I love working with oldies and, and you know, I'd love to do paediatrics and work with babies and stuff. But it's tough when this is all patients see. I kind of feel like people must look at me and be like, how are you a nurse? I just feel like people doubt your ability to pass judgment on them for being unhealthy when I'm unhealthy myself and I feel like a hypocrite, so yeah. Her biggest supporter though is super slim best friend and flatmate, Laura. Laura is very, very little. She's very thin and she's quite tall and beautiful and, you know, I know I know people have made comments of like, oh, look, it's the fat and skinny team. Oh. 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 Isn't there a tag on it? You don't feel confident? Oh, my God. That is so perfect. Oh. Bonnie is an amazing person. She's the closest friend, the like, more than a friend to me, she's like a sister. Now, years on, the two are inseparable and they just love to party. For Bonnie, that means always putting on a happy fat girl facade. I think when I meet new people, especially boys, I feel like I always have to be, you know, really happy and bright and bubbly, and, you know, because people aren't going to look at me first. But often the happy facade breaks down and the cruelty of what her size is costing Bonnie can't be ignored. I've had people in the street, you know, be like, oh my God, watch out the way, you know, whoa, move over, the way it was coming out. Someone will say something and I'll like run away and cry and, you know, be really hurt and upset. It's hard, there's always someone that will look at you funny or say something rude or, you know, so some days it's not so easy to get up and put that happy face on and, you know, be the brave person that you're supposed to be. She's got so much scars and that she's carried the whole way. Oh, she's just, just, she's just such a beautiful person. She has really been through so much. <laughs> Today, Bonnie is in for a shock as she meets the no excuses man charged with turning her life around for the first time. The instant impression of Bonnie, she's a big girl. She's 22 years of age. What has she been doing for 22 years of her life? She's a big girl. Walking up, I was, I was very nervous and very apprehensive. I was, I was quite scared. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Lee. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm here to make <laughs> your life even happier. Fantastic. Fantastic. Bonnie was a bit guarded when she first came in. She was very, nearly threatened by me. The first thing we're going to do is get on the scales okay. and see where we are today. Nobody knows how much I weigh. I don't, I don't even think my family would know how much I weigh. So to think of the whole of Australia knowing how much I weigh is, is scary, you know. OK, let's see. One forty-five point seven. Okay. It's a confronting thing to, to, to talk about, you know, my weight and having it all laid out in black and white. It was confronting, and it is, it is upsetting. Bonnie, not good, but somewhere to start. Yes. Okay, I'll forget. Your waist measurement one sixty-one mm -hmm. centimeters. Prones you more to illness, cancers, all of the above. You being a nurse should know better. Mm -hmm. She just needs to get out there and start exercising and start enjoying life and not having this 
you know, little fat girl has to laugh the most to be accepted in the room attitude, which I think she's going to change very quickly. Tell me how you got into this position. I saw a photo of myself out with Fred and I realised how big I was and you know how far from normal that I was and you're very normal. I'm 22 and you know I like going out and dressing up and you know and I don't look like everyone else and I don't want to die at 30 of a heart attack. I'm studying to be a nurse, so I'm well aware of the health implications of being overweight. So, you know, having diabetes and, and getting heart disease, so, and, you know, I know it can lead to death. I want to have babies and get married, and, you know, I know that, you know, in the position I'm in, that wouldn't happen. So, you know, that upsets me as well. What I see is a beautiful young lady who has so much to offer and so much energy and so much care and love she's afraid to give that to anybody. And so she puts this facade around or up to uh, block it out. When do you start taking ownership? Now. <laughs> now? This is the first time she's really had to confront it. This is the start of the end of her old life and the start of her new life. What are you committed to do and promising, committed to me <laughs> to do? Whatever I have to. Whatever you have to? Whatever I have to. Anything? Anything. Anything. Come on. <laughs> I'm scared that I'm going to get to 30 or 40 and have a heart attack and, and die. Over the next 40 days, Lee wants Bonnie to lose 10 kilos. Get up, get up, get up. And that will take pain. What do I need to do? Nothing. It's not what you have to do. It's what I have to do. Thank God. Twenty-two-year-old Bonnie Cool's first step on the scales has been a tearful wake-up call. One forty-five point seven. Okay. It's a confronting thing to, to, to talk about, you know, my weight and having it all laid out in black and white. It was confronting, and it is, it is upsetting. When do you start taking ownership? Now. <laughs> now. This is the first time she's really had to confront it. This is the start of the end of her old life and the start of her new life. Now Bonnie's life must change drastically, and that will begin at home. Welcome, beautiful Bonnie. Hello. Look what we've got for you. Wow. Fresh fruit, vegetables, all your new diet. Looks great. Yeah, it does look great. I eat too much. I don't exercise enough. I probably drink too much alcohol. I'm a procrastinator and there's always a reason why, you know, I can't just go and do something. Do you cook much now to cook this food? I do, I love cooking. Oh, fantastic, so this will be easy for you. The food's yeah, gonna I be very easy cooking. for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about uh, eating and drinking, socialising, what about the drinking part now? I think for me it would be easier to just not go out you know, try and limit it. But you've still got to socialise. So if you yeah. do go out and you do have a drink, have one for one. Have a glass of water first and then have a glass of yeah. alcohol. Bonnie needs to be headstrong in this situation because, you know, that one drink makes a big difference at the end of the day when she has to be very disciplined and focused on what her job is. But right now, I need you to go and get changed because yeah. we're going to go for a workout. Cool. Bonnie, this is where your life's going to change out here back down the bottom of the stairs and back up. I don't feel comfortable going to the gym. I get embarrassed and, you know, I feel like everyone's looking at me and judging me. OK, I want you to squat. One, and up. She's only just discovered the park a week ago. That's two blocks from your house. What have you been doing? How much are your legs working? Pretty hard. You feeling that now? Yeah. This is just going to fall off you. Bonnie is very motivated. She's just got to get out there and start doing things and pointing that energy in the right direction and getting her life going forward, not using, you know, the cliches of that she's lived by walking down the street and people making fun of her anymore. All the way around the oval, how quick do you think you can get around there? Three minutes. Three minutes. All right, I'm going to give you 320. Okay. And how are you feeling? A little bit puffed. Yeah? You want to keep up with me if we need to make it on time? 
You know, Bonnie spends most of her time indoors, inside, hiding under this mushroom or canvas of non-reality. So my philosophy behind her is getting her outside, getting to let her understand who she is. And so she can become, again, this female that she portrays that she, she is to everybody else. Here we are back to the start, Bonnie. Yep. What do you think? Five minutes. Do you? Five minutes, 20. He's really positive and motivating and, you know, he makes me feel like I'm, I'm going to do well. But Bonnie has already worked out that this will be a very lonely journey where excuses won't cut it. My biggest challenge for losing weight will be being motivated to, to get up and do stuff and, and, and exercise and, you know, not make excuses for myself of why I can't do it. Lee has set Bonnie a weight loss target of 10 kilos in 40 days. I think she's all over this because now she's motivated. She understands how important it is to be healthy and happy and not just fat and happy. Bonnie says she loves to cook and she'll need to do plenty of that as she tries to curtail her social life and avoid temptation. If you were to sum up to me, what do you think the problems are that you're having with your with your eating? Uh, like don't eat all day and then at, at night time um, I a have a huge big like binge and then I just feel sick because I've eaten too much. Okay, <laughs> well that's one thing we want to change. Yeah. We want to try and take your calories and spread them over the yeah. course of the day. I think one of the things for her that's really tricky actually is learning how to have her social life, be young, have fun, be out and about but also know how to eat healthily and, and, and make that work for her within her lifestyle. But three weeks into this weight loss journey, her best friend is tired of the new Bonnie. She gets very upset over little things and she shouldn't, but I am very confused about the changes. I'm worried about the friendship, I guess. You know, she's the longest friend I've had and the strongest friendship I've had, and I don't want to lose that. But Bonnie doesn't seem to notice her best friend's growing unhappiness. Like, I've got lots of people supporting me and, and on my back constantly. Like, are you doing the right thing? I hope, I hope you've gone for a walk today, you know. Are you eating properly? I, I, I do. I have a dozen people that are, that are constantly reminding me, don't you do that? Don't, what are you doing? Like, you have to do the right thing, you know. Too much? Do you think so, people harp at you too much? No, I enjoy it. I, I like being, like, kept in line. So today is Saturday, about half past eight, and, um, and Laura's getting ready to go out. And, um, and usually I would probably be, um, be going out with her, but I've decided to not go out just because it takes temptation away. You know, I'm not going to be tempted to drink and I just, I want to try and focus on what I'm doing. So far. Oh, yeah, can you make extra? No, Why? because there's certain amounts of things that I have to have. I'm allowed to have 100 grams of meat and I'm allowed to have half a cup of brown rice and yeah, I'm allowed to have... that up and then halve it. Yeah, but it, it's, it won't... Do you know what I mean? It's just easy to just make mine. I'll make you some afterwards. I feel like I'm treading water and I'm slowly drowning living with her because she is just... I'm trying to be so strong and so, you know, focused on what I'm doing and she is just... My mental well-being. My body is great. I feel great, you know, but... I just mentally feel so challenged at the moment and she's driving me mad. I felt grumpy this week because I've been um, I've been a bit tired and I've been sick, so, you know, but... You can't do that. I'm going to go somewhere else if you're going to be a twat. I'm going to make tea. <laughs> I'm doing what I want when I want, which is not like me. I usually do what Laura wants when Laura wants me to do it. I'll be quiet. I don't care what it is. I like it. I haven't had any takeaway in this whole time, have I? Yes, you have. When? You had pizza. Oh. You've had heaps. You've had more takeaway than you normally do. I have not. Yeah, I'm perfect. My name's Bonnie. I didn't say I was perfect. I'm just saying you still have been eating junk food. Oh, don't push me. Stop. And I feel like she's setting me up to fail at every turn, and I can't do it. Despite Bonnie's domestic conflict, she has to face her first weigh-in and the 10-kilo target Lee set 40 days ago. So, Bonnie, it's time to be weighed. 
It's been 40 days. How do you think India? I don't know, I'm scared. <laughs> Why? Because I don't know how much I will have lost, so... Do you think you've lost any? I hope I've lost at least something. And if you haven't? I'm going to be very upset <laughs> with myself. When I was about to stand on the scales, you know, I was, I was petrified. I honestly thought that there was going to be little to no loss. Step up. <sighs> when you started this, Bonnie, you were 145.7. 145.7. Step up. When I was about to stand on the scales, you know, I was, I was petrified. I honestly thought that there was going to be little to no loss. And, um, and the thought of disappointing Lee, it killed me. I was so scared. When you started this, Bonnie, you were 145.7. 145.7. One thirty five point eight. <laughs> ten kilos is it's ten kilos, you know. He he couldn't possibly be disappointed at that. And you know, it just proves to myself that I am capable of this and I can do it and with the effort, you know, I will do well at it. So, you know, it's just ten kilos out of out of a lot more. Good result for you. Not good enough for me. Yeah. Next time we get to these scales, you've got to be under 120. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Don't let me down. Mm. Don't let yourself down. Yeah. Bonnie's done really, really well losing the weight that she has. She's not a super-sized girl, so she's going to find it harder to lose large amounts of weight like that, but she just, keeps have, she just has to keep chipping away at it and get there bit by bit. Bonnie's friendship with flatmate Laura is fast disintegrating but she's determined to use other friends to help her keep on track. Chef salad sounds really yummy, Bonnie. Chicken tossed with garlic, prawns, smoked salmon, avocado on a green salad with balsamic mustard, mustard dressing. You could probably get it without the dressing if the mustard's bad. I reckon I might just get the chicken salad because it's like the dressing's only balsamic. Bonnie is determined to succeed and doesn't want anything or anyone getting in her way, especially best friend Laura. I don't know, she's just upsetting me you know, like she's just doing the wrong thing like at every turn I swear she's trying to like sabotage me what? and she is well I don't know I don't know like there's something wrong with her do you think that she's jealous that you've yeah she's got a spotlight yeah she's starting to worry about whether or not she's going to be the hot friend in the relationship well, that's kind of how I think like the, the next door neighbor's son was like um oh watch out Laura like she's going to be a super hottie she's going to cut your lunch since I started this, you know, I have, you know, become more empowered in myself and I feel so much more confident in my convictions and I think I'm realising that I don't need her to tell me what to do and I don't need her approval to be happy with what I'm doing. Doesn't encourage you? or No, nah, no, nah. and she's always like, you know, oh, I've got McDonald's, do you want some? Like, um, oh, come out drinking. Like, and I'm not... She to... knows that you can't. Whatever, like her just messing with my head and that's what she's doing. Because if you're putting all your time into worrying about how much of a bitch Laura's being, you're not thinking about making healthy choices. And it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and I need to be able to give it 110% and not be like mentally and emotionally drained, drained by her. Are you really going to move up? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so I've had enough. Alright, have a good day. I will have fun. I love you. I love you too. The next day, while Laura is out shopping, Bonnie plans to secretly pack her bags. I love you. That's goodbye for me. And she doesn't even know. Bye. Don't eat the cupcakes. I won't. And there's a, a huge likelihood that she's not going to want to talk to me. Well, like when she gets home and realises that I've gone. And she'll know that she's been, like, set up. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. So today is the day that I'm leaving Laura's house. I'm moving out because I don't feel that we 
uh, good for each other at this point in time. I'm really trying to focus on the diet and exercising and I don't feel like I can do that with her around. So um, I just want to remove myself and, and try and live in an environment that's going to help me make the most of this. What happened there? Because you guys were the best of buddies. We still are. We still are. We're still good. Did yep. you learn anything about that experience with Laura? This wasn't something she could help me with and she can't... She can't relate to what I'm doing. She doesn't understand. She's never, ever in her life once had to worry about what she eats or had to exercise. She doesn't have to think about it. So mm. she's like, oh, really? It doesn't matter that much. You know, it was a big thing for me to be able to, like, pull away from her and and, um, and do something for myself. And you can take that one too. And that one. Yes, sir. I'm really guilty. And I feel like I've betrayed Laura's trust and I feel like she's not going to forgive me for, for doing this to her. Then also on the flip side, I feel relieved. I feel like a weight's been lifted. I just need to go and just have a break and regroup and, and get back on track. Love you, Daddy. I am, I think, the next step in my journey is, is something that it's not going to include Laura, which is upsetting because, you know, I always thought she'd be by my side every step of the way and, and that's just not how this has worked out. When she gets home tonight and I'm not here, this is just going to hurt her. got home from shopping with my mum and there was a, a note on the thing and I read it. You know I love you more than anything and you are my best friend and such an important person in my life. I've had to make a decision that hurts and upsets me more than you could know. When I first read the note, I was just, I was literally just, like, standing there going, and then I walked into her room and I was just like, oh, was the flood of tears and that. I don't think you should move out of someone's home by just packing up and leaving. <laughs> you should talk to them about it or something. Everyone has their own decisions. But will a new home and new flatmates really make the difference for Bonnie? Or is this just another excuse to avoid Bonnie, Trainer Lee's in. relentless pressure? Your goal is to run in the oval in... Three minutes, 20. Three minutes, 20. It's three and a half months since Bonnie set a goal of running around this park in three minutes, 20 seconds. The last time she tried, she managed just 5 minutes 20. But has she done enough exercise to get anywhere near that goal? Go. My philosophy behind her is getting her outside, opening the view up of the world again, and so she can become this female that she portrays that she, she is to everybody else. No excuses, remember. What we're dealing with here is a girl that's got confidence, but it's a superficial confidence. She portrays this overwhelmingly happy, vibrant girl. In actual fact, she's got a lot of pain behind there, a lot of hurt. All right, Bonnie, here. Three minutes, 50. Do you think it's acceptable? You made that goal for me. Yeah. She started off like a bull at a gate and she knew within herself, within that first step, that she'd failed. Maybe he won't see this, maybe he won't understand. Have I confused him enough that he won't bother about my first goal? No. <laughs> what is it? <sighs> Bonnie, what is it? Bonnie. I'm the number one runaway, and you know, I don't want to run away from this because it doesn't get any better than this, you know, this is it, and this is, you know, do or die kind of thing, so I don't want to run away, I want to, you know, make it work. I'm not letting go, I'm not giving up, you've let me down. You told me four weeks ago you were prepared to change, you were prepared to do everything. As a person, Bonnie will find it very difficult in her life to achieve anything if she keeps walking away from things that she thinks are too hard. You know, there, everyone has hard times in their life, everyone has demons they have to fight, but Bonnie won't accept any of them and she won't confront any of them, so she will always run away and quit. We move on from here, I want you to walk. Middle of the ground there, do whatever you need to do, come back. We've got three minutes 20, all right? 
Off you go. You walk over there. Come back, the new person, Bonnie. If I have to be tough and I have to give a tough love, so be it. I'm not going away. Okay. What's your fear? What is it? I'm failing. You made yourself fail. You made yourself fail for here today. What do I need to do? Nothing. It's not what you have to do, it's what I have to do. Thank God. It's what you have to do. What haven't you done? You haven't been honest to yourself. This isn't a romance novel, this is, re this is real. You want a better life? You want to change your life? You want to be a better person? You've got to do it. Yeah, I know. But rather than confront her lifestyle head on, Bonnie's found an excuse to pack up her belongings again. Thank and this time, she's moving to Sydney, leaving what she believes are her biggest temptations behind. I came to the realisation that I'm very easily influenced to do the wrong thing. And all of my friends, I just feel like none of them are supportive how I would like them to be. And I get sidetracked and I run off the rails a little bit. And while she might think that running away is the answer, there's no escaping trainer Lee and her second way in. Bonnie, welcome to Sydney. Bon, you're here. Come on. Bonnie. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? Tell me. <laughs> What's wrong? I'm scared I'm going to put on weight since last time I was weight. I chose you for this because um, I know you can do it. Yeah. But I can't let you continue running away from things. Yeah. Bonnie's problem is herself. You want to look at someone who wants to sabotage your whole life and everything they do? Look at Bonnie. Look no further than Bonnie. Reality is, she cannot handle the truth. So, 135.7, step up. Lee had expected Bonnie to be under 120 kilos at this weigh-in. 138.5. So Bonnie's put on three kilos of weight. For Bonnie to move forward, she has to, one, understand where she's with the psyche and how she wants to go about it emotionally. It's going to be a big emotional journey for her to get over this hump and then step forward and, and just achieve what we all know she can do. 138.5 is unacceptable. You can't go backwards when you're meant to be going forwards. Reality is you've got to stop running away and you've got to start moving forward. You can do this. All right, you have to have a good look at it. Every night there's a new goal. Every day you're going to go home now and you're going to write a new goal. Enough of the crap. Yeah. Success comes to those who want success and make success. You know, Bonnie wants it, she needs to make it now. And she's got the opportunity. There is no greater opportunity and time for her to step up to the mark and get going. She'll please me when she achieves her goal. And until then, I won't be happy. I love you, but I'm not going to put up with the tears anymore. No. All right? Truly. Yeah. And that I shows in what you need to do. You're making me fail because <laughs> you're not believing in me. Yeah. Go. Focus. We're running at this speed for a minute. Do not stop. You've quit your whole life. You're not going to quit now. We're going to keep going. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Bonnie, you hang in there. Bonnie needs to step out of the dark and into the light and just be Bonnie. Bonnie, you did it. Of course I did it. <laughs> of course you did it. Then why are you letting me down? Why did you go down that road? Hey. Because I'm silly. Yeah. And over the next few weeks, Bonnie will make huge changes in her life. Armed with a new self-belief, she takes on a live-in nannying job. I'm loving being here, you know. Um, I think I'm doing so much better. I'm so much happier and settled and a bit more mellowed out and not so highly strung. So it's, it's nicer for me. Decides to give slimming shakes a go. They're OK. The chocolate ones are good. Strawberry ones are better. The vanilla ones are poo. Don't even bother. 
And most important of all, for the first time in her life, she feels able to run around. So, takes on something she has always feared, a team sport. She always felt cast out, alienated. She's always been stuck in this cliche of the fat, funny girl. Now she's out there, she's involved, she's part of the team, she's enjoying it, and this will change her life. This will make her understand the woman she is, and she's loving it. Push again. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> You're so strong. It's good. I'm doing things now that I that I dreamed of doing and never thought I would do, especially not at this point, like like playing team sport. It was something I wanted to do and it was on my goals, dreams list. And when the opportunity came up, I ran away because I was like, I'm not ready to do this, I'm not fit enough, I'm not, you know, I can't do this, I'm, I, I'm going to let all these people down because I'm, I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't. And then I can, I can, I can, and it's great, and I love it, and I've made friends, and it's social. OK, Bonnie, let's go. That's it. Right now, this is where the real transformation starts to happen for Bonnie, because she's feeling wanted, she's feeling loved, she's feeling needed, she's, you know, she's embracing it all. She will actually run towards this and make this happen. Bonnie might have won over the women's rugby team, but she needs her efforts to be reflected in weight loss and in being able to overcome new challenges. Bob, yep. why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Come on, why? Twenty-two-year-old Bonnie Cools has never been a runner. She'd never even exercised until she began this extreme weight loss journey. What do I need to do? Nothing. It's not what you have to do, it's what I have to do. Thank God. To lose 22 kilos, it's taken her 20 weeks. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. But the girl who loves to drink and party has found the changes in her life... Come on, Bonnie. ...almost too much to bear. And trainer Lee Campbell is not making it any easier. Nearly a thousand stairs to the top, OK? We're not going to stop the whole way. You find it in your heart, how to get to the top. That was like, holy shit. How am I going to do that? My favourite, stairs. We all know I love stairs. No, I hate stairs. They just kill me. Bonnie's challenge is a trek through the bush and a stair climb, which is nearly a thousand stairs to the top. Should be fairly easy for Bonnie because she's been training very hard. Should be a piece of cake. Slow it down. I psych myself out and then I panic because I can't breathe properly. Like, I work myself up until I can't breathe. I just I panic. And it's really frustrating because it's, like, it's a limitation of what I'm doing. You've come all this way, Bonnie. Don't be disappointed with yourself. Bonnie is... She's at the crossroads now. She can really achieve a lot or she can let herself down in a big way in the fact of not being grown up and taking responsibility for who Bonnie is. Come on, Bonnie. Bob, yep. why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Come on, why? This is what keeps stopping you achieving everything. When are you going to take responsibility for yourself? Yeah. You know, I, I'm trying really hard to take ownership and and make it me, you know. Like I just said, it's I can't, I can't blame anyone because the only person that can can do this is me. No, no one can make choices for me. Like I'm nearly 23, you know. It doesn't. It's not Mum or Laura or the people who I live with or anybody. It's me. What is it? I'm scared. I'm not going to be able to do it. Come on. We're nearly there. Why don't you just give it to me for the top? Prove me wrong. Up to the finish. <laughs> Archway's there. Come on, Bon. Get up, get up, get up. You're there. The finish is there, Bon. Well done. Hold on. Have a drink. 
Bonnie will find it very difficult in life to achieve anything if she keeps walking away from things that she thinks are too hard. She can achieve anything and she's proven that over and over again. She just needs to accept it now and move on. So fantastic work, great effort. Well done. Thank you. I'm really proud, a thousand stairs. You know, I don't think I could have done a hundred stairs four months ago. But Bonnie knows that her chances of real weight loss success always fall apart without her trainer by her side to tell her she's doing all right. So Lee has decided to send her to a specialist weight loss center for a month. And this time, she can't run away. Okay, go for it, 45 seconds. I don't wanna fail, like I fail at everything because I let myself and because I make that an, op an okay option. Like, I don't wanna fail at this. At the end of the day, this all goes away and it's me that's left with the disappointment. I don't want to disappoint myself anymore because it's not a nice feeling and it's not something that's great to live with, you know. It makes it harder and it makes it even less motivating to do something about it. She came in with a real feeling that she wanted to give it a go and I think she had a kind of feeling that it was a bit of a last chance for her and she wanted to grab it with both hands. She's just had the fortitude to work through them this time and just come in with a fabulous attitude. So she's really just got that positive mindset to make things happen for her. Thank you. Oh, well done, 22 kilos down before she started this intensive treatment, a much more positive Bonnie now has to face the scales that she hates so much. So, Bonnie, we've been here just under four weeks now. You started at 123.2. And how much were you at your heaviest? Um, when I started the show, I was 145.7. 145.7. So do you want to see what you are now? Mm -hmm. Yeah? You ready? We're about to find out if Bonnie has finally overcome her fear of the scales. It's nine months since Bonnie Cool set out to turn her life around. I don't want to be like this. Like, 100%, I can't live like this because I don't like myself anymore. She started this challenge at more than 145 kilos. I don't want to die at 30 of a heart attack. And all she wanted to do was to be able to run around this. Why is there an obstacle there the whole time? I've not put it there. I've only given you the tools to get over the obstacle. And find a man to love. I want to have babies and get married and, you know, I know that, you know, in the position I'm in, that wouldn't happen. 40 days in, Bonnie had lost 10 kilos and was right on track. It's 10 kilos, you know, he, he couldn't possibly be disappointed at that. But then she went off the rails. 138.5. Besides the addiction to food, there was always excuses. What is it? I'm scared I'm not going to be able to do it. So, trainer Lee Campbell sent her to a weight loss centre for a month. Now we find out if that worked. When I started the show, I was 145.7. 145.7, so do you want to see what you are now? 130.9! Yeah! <laughs> High five Thank for you. me! Well done! So that's a difference of... 31.8 oh kilos. <laughs> that is amazing. I've lost 30 kilos now since we started, and it's so much easier to do things now. Like, it's so much easier to say, I am going to keep doing it because every kilo you lose is just that, like, little bit easier. You run that little bit further, you do one more push up. 32 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> It's like the goals that were set, like getting under 100 kilos, like that's only 15 kilos away. That's actually really achievable now. It's just so. astonishing, isn't it? The time we spent with Bonnie was a roller coaster of emotion. You made yourself fail. You made yourself fail for here. And while it was a difficult road... Up to the finish, <laughs> the archway's there. Bonnie's life has dramatically changed for the better. Wow, was I really that fat? <laughs> you know, I was so oblivious to to myself and my health, and I thought it was okay to be like that. And and I was 
convinced that I was happy and I was painfully unhappy. I'm not the same person as the person in this photo. This is someone who had no respect for their body and their life and had no thought for their future, you know. And it's someone I don't ever want to be again. And now she's shedding her past life for good. I don't have any hair. <laughs> and welcoming in the new and improved Bonnie. I love her, it's awesome. You, you. Wow. I actually do feel like a different person now. I look like one too. <laughs> I'm getting happier with, with myself again. Like I was really unhappy with my body and the way I felt about myself. I'm so proud of myself and you know, no one can take that away from me. There will still be people that will judge me because I'm not skinny, but I'm happy and I think I'm beautiful and I've achieved so much. And I did it all by myself and goodbye to this person. Bonnie, you hang in there. I've learned that I actually can do it. I had a huge fear of failure, which stopped me even trying. Yes, Bonnie. I have huge faith in myself now that I can do stuff and I'm very capable and, you know, if you put your mind to stuff, it's actually not that hard.